And I don't really know what comes next I'm just doing my best Even though I'm so stressed out Everything just feels like a test That I feel so depressed When I can't seem to get out But something deep inside won't let me Inspired by worth, I desire your worst, so you can just hide while I work. I ain't tired, you first. I'll write a second, third verse about the lies you go disperse. You never did, sh- I know it hurts. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired by all this. Tell me that I can't and I won't. That's what guides me the most. You lies, I'll do what I want. All the past and the pettiness Oh, reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time You're delirious, mysterious Because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains at last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah Now that I've been put through I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself Never slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement Gonna learn the consequence of being incompetent Mental health is confidence, dreams and some honestness I'm not here to save the day, that's for you to take away I could play a million mind games but instead I say Something not illogical, something that is topical Rub it on and watch it go, make yourself unstoppable Dreams are irresponsible, but they're always possible If you just believe you could be so remarkable Thoughts in my head, a collage and they spread I'll be great one day, going off of my meds No, I'm not giving up, no, I'm not giving in I will make it to the top, taking off in the wind I gotta make it, I'm saving every day to taste it I'm patient, but my mind, it can hardly take it I'm chasing a dream that I've had for several ages of bacon Modern kingdom for the taking Now that I've been put through I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself Never slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. 
Right, we're going to get through this information that I've got here on the document thing out. And there's a lot more than just a document to come out now. Yeah? There's another document that's come out. And we're going to look at it. Because in my eyes, it's a flipping farce. That last, the last document we look at. I don't see how that would even be accepted. He's not a lawyer. He has a, you know what I mean? Anyway, so before we go anywhere, I'd just like to play this one video. Play that most times if I remember to when I talk on the Sebastian Rogers case. And I think the reason for that is because with all this everything that's going on on the YouTube streets, right? And not just YouTube streets on TikTok as well, right? But mainly YouTube. I think this little boy. This boy has been lost. Has been lost. So say his name. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. That's his name. And on the 25th of February, he was out for the day with his mum, family. He had a great day. According to his mother. He had a great day. He came home. He put the trash bins out because that's his chore. Came in, went and played in his room for a while. Then at nine o'clock, his mum said, called him, said, it's time for bed. So he comes through and he goes, young night, puppies. Young night, mummy. Love you. Love you. Right? Goes to bed. No hassles. <laughs> I'm, I have never known any old... Any child just go, okay, I'm going to bed now, Mum. Love you. Bye. Night night. Never. Right. So after such a, a busy day as well, he's autistic. He's going to have all his senses and sim senses overwhelmed. The different smells and noises, the sights, the sounds, everything. It's just going to be so overwhelming for him. And then he comes home and he goes to bed like normal. <sighs> no. And even Chris said, someone asked Chris, would, could you say or would you say he was overstimulated on that day? Chris wasn't even there, apparently, allegedly. But he said, no, he wasn't. Hmm, okay. Allegedly, he wasn't there. Now, I know Seth has shown proof of where he was because it's on a YouTube channel. But has Chris got, has he shown proof of where he was? You know what I mean? Has he? No. As far as I know, he has not shown proof as to where he was. Now, we since come out to find out that apparently on the Thursday, the Friday, the Saturday and Sunday before Sebastian went missing, <coughs> 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 so 
sorry about that. I still got a bit of a croak <coughs> chesty cough before he went missing. That's Chris had a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. Now, I've seen someone comment today on the channel. Has it been checked properly to see if Chris was in the Texas Roadhouse on that Sunday night? Was he? We don't know. We can only see Sebastian walk out with his mum. So we have to take for fact that he wasn't there. Right? And we have to trust Sonia County Sheriff's Office. Uh, no. I can say that I'm in the UK. I don't have to worry about Sonia County Sheriff's Office. Because I would never have to deal with them. Right? Anyway, get off that point. So, 6.30, he leaves there, comes home, puts the trash out. And then at 6 a.m. in the morning, when his mum goes to to wake him up, he's not there. She's running around like headless chicken for about one minute, two minutes, on the phone to Chris then. And, um, so about ten past, I say the latest, ten past six, she was in the car driving around. I've since found out that twenty past six, the time he said he was phoning the police, law enforcement and all that lot, Twenty past six on Seth's phone is a missed phone call from Chris. So instead of phoning the police, the phone Seth. Okay, fair enough. It's the father. But why twenty past six? Why not six o'clock when she first found out that her son their son was missing? Why phone Chris? You know what I mean? Why didn't she let the father know she could have phoned the um, prison, his manager, his, the, the chief or whoever it is up, and let him know that Seth's son was missing? He would have had him pulled off duty and sent home at, at six o'clock. But no, they make a phone call knowing, knowing he can't answer his phone. Because his car phone is in the car. Because I'm not allowed to take the phone into work. Which I really understand why. Right? So he finally comes out of work about what, 5 past 10 past 6. 10 past 7. Gets in his car at 20 past 7. By the time he gets in his car, it's 20 past 7. He looks at his phone. He sees a missed phone call. And a text message and whatever. Phone 911. Or call 911. So he phones Chris. And Chris says, don't, don't get angry. Don't get angry. Don't get angry. Don't get angry. But your son is missing. <gasps> don't get angry. Why the hell would I not be angry? Oh, it's alright. My son's missing. It's okay. Yeah. What do you mean my feckin' son is missing? You know what I mean? Of course I'm flipping angry now. You just told me my son is missing. Oh, I'm not going to be calm as, oh, he's just going for a little walk somewhere. He'll be back. It's not like that. Anyway. So he's phoning Chris, uh, Seth at 20 past six. He's got a log of it. Seth's got, a, there's a log somewhere. Someone's got that log. Right. So, what was the game between 10 past 6 when she was in a car? Because she said she was already talking to Chris by the time she got in a car. And I'd say she was in a car between 5 and 10 past 6. So why did it take him so long to, I phone Seth, even though he couldn't answer his phone because he wouldn't have his phone on him? Right? And B... Law enforcement. I truly believe he phoned at about 6.30. Not 6.20. Like he says. Right? So. What was they doing in all that time? They was on the phone. 
to each other. So she must have been on the phone when he tried phoning Chris. Do a three-way call, maybe. No answer. But it would come from Chris's phone because Chris would be doing the three-way uh, phoning Seth. So it would acknowledge it was coming from Chris's phone. Anyway, we're not going, getting into all that. I've been into all that and I want to get into this. I want to get into this document. What I'm talking about then can wait for me another night because tonight we need to get through this document. Okay. Just make sure it's up on the screen. Yes. Let's see if I can zoom in. Close that down because that's not going to work. I don't think. No, it's not working. My voice option is not working. Just make sure it isn't too big now for the screen. That's perfect. Right. This is Law Officers of Joseph Lesniak, LLC, and founder Brandon Van Hartshorn, Levin and Lindhorn, Council for Plaintiffs. Right. Now, just let's see. This one here. Right, let's highlight it. This one here. Right. He is a big name. He was the attorney for uh, Donald Trump. I don't know if he still is, but he was. So he knows what he's doing when he's putting these cases together. He knows. He knows exactly what to do. And so does this guy up here. Right, they know that is one good team. Just them two together. And yet people are making this a joke. Making all a joke. Right? These two. And then he's got does and does 1 through to 50. What they mean by that is they've got another 50 people who are they are looking at sending an injunction to. But they're going after these two first. After these two first. Because they're from Pennsylvania. Alright? And that's where their main, one of their main offices are. In Pennsylvania. So they're going after them too. And I have got a video that Nick the Hat done. Right? And actually, I might play that so then you get a better understanding of what's going on. Okay. Let's put this up. Uh, let's get this up. Yeah, right now you guys are seeing the first round of litigation that just went out. Um, I guess that's our first shot fired. It's the first of many. Again, we are filing 10 lawsuits in 10 different states with the intent to combine them all together and make them federal. Um, enough is enough. This is about cyberbullying that has deterred the case. And I can see that more bullies are coming on board. I welcome you to submit your motions with the court. They would love to hear from you. Trust me. Uh, it'll make Make our jobs easier too so go ahead and file that um be sure to follow the procedures and whatnot i would consult an attorney in pennsylvania if you're going to file a motion in pennsylvania because it's much different um but nevertheless guys we are going to 10 states with this it's pennsylvania is the first for obvious reasons like uh, mr castor said the declaration of independence 
signed 13 miles away from the courthouse where we intend to bring these people. Um, and there's a lot of them. It's not just barbecue lady. It's not just granny is watching. Um, those are two lead defendants and you'll see more coming. Um, lots more. There are 50 people we intend to bring in and we intend to litigate to the end. Those that think there's discovery and stuff like this, you guys are funny. This is not a discovery type of case. We're not asking for money. Um, this is an injunction. And if you know what an injunction is, great. If you don't, great. Um, it's not something to play games with. At the end of the day, we are not going to stop until Sebastian is found. The bullies are really working overtime to stop that. And it doesn't work, right? Uh, you guys can't really stop it. All the troll accounts, we sent out subpoenas to X, we sent out subpoenas to YouTube, Google, Alphabet Inc., and Meta. All of the troll accounts, we're getting their IP addresses, we're going to match them back to those that own the, the troll accounts. From there, those individuals will be dragged through and brought into Pennsylvania or California or Tennessee, whichever jurisdiction they are in. Um, again, we are going to be filing in 10 different states, 10 different lawsuits with the intent to make them federal. The goal here is to stop the nonsense, find Sebastian Rogers, and we will. Um, once these clowns get out of the way, once these keyboard warriors get out of the way, Sebastian will come home. Again, guys, stay safe. Uh, remain vigilant. We're under the assumption that Sebastian Rogers is alive. Again, we are operating under that assumption. If you see something, obviously alert authorities and uh, remain safe. Stop the bullying. Stop the doxing. Stop all of that. It's not worth it. It's not worth the money that you're going to be spending in litigation. It's really not. Um, we just started and it's a, a rather big bill on our end. So I can't imagine the other end. So guys, again, all we're asking for is for some civility here. Uh, we're not asking for money. If these individuals were to agree tomorrow to the terms, which include to stop bullying Tuesday, we would have the agreement. And then Wednesday, the judge will review the agreement and decide whether or not she or he wants to accept it. The judge may very well know I'm not accepting this. I want those women to appear before me so I can see what's going on. Um, but nevertheless, settlement, when we say settlement, that's what that entails. It means that you agree to stop what you are doing and the court will issue an order with that settlement, making it a court ordered agreement, making any more headspace for bullying not, not a thing. Um, it's not just for the defendants in this case. It's not just for the plaintiffs in this case. If these defendants go and start targeting other people, call us. Um, if you've been a victim of any of these doxing individuals, call us. You can email doxing at, at night.agency, and we will obviously investigate your claims and streamline them to the attorneys. Um, this is becoming a class action suit against a lot of individuals. There are many more plaintiffs that have been that, that haven't been named yet. It's closer to 20. Um, and these are also entities, organizations that are joining us to stop the bullying. It's national cyber bullying at backwards, but it has something to do with bullying awareness this month. Again, and guys, if you see something, say something, feel free to report people if they're doxing you to us now, now that we are getting um, the engines are taking. It's not too late to join in as plaintiff You've been attacked. Have a, you have rights, right? There are laws, there are boundaries. They must respect those boundaries or they'll be brought in and they can explain it to the judge. Again, guys, stay safe, stay vigilant. If you see something, say something and good luck. Right, so that's where we are so far. He's just talking about the litigation, right? And how it's 10 states, 10. So that's 10 different lawsuits. Right? But how many lawsuits in each state, we do not know. Right? So we're going to present then, stop this, and put this back up. Okay? I know there's one name they're going to be putting up there as a preliminary injunction. <laughs> they probably got his name up on this by now. Right? So they are the two councils for plaintiffs, right? For plaintiffs. These are the plaintiffs. At Night Media, LLC, Dwayne Dogman Chapman, Rogers, Tony, 
on Mathis. Oh, hang on, Rogers. Tony Al Mathis, Andrea Griffin, Brittany Nicole Jackson, Christine O'Donnell, Julia Valenti. Hong, I'm not going to even say his name because I'm going to get a freaking name up. And Nick the Hat. Right? And they've all got complaints about just these two so far. But there is up to another 50 inclusive. The parties, Plaintiff Act Night Media, LLC, is a Pennsylvania limited liability company with its principal place of business at 1 World Trade Center, Floor 85, New York, New York, and is in the process of relocating. I don't blame them. <laughs> right, and these are just the plaintiffs. I've blacked out the names and they rung out the names, but they dresses. Plaintiffs, history of the case. Plaintiffs commenced this instant action by filing a complaint in equity contemporaneously herewith. A true with and correct copy of the complaint is attached here to it and made a part hereof as exhibit A. Right, now, I understand some people might not understand me. I'm sorry about that. That is just my brummy accent from Birmingham. So, for the reason stated in the tax complaint, I have very much. What? The agreement of which are incorporated herein by reference. At night, eat at and praise this honourable court to enter a preliminary injunction granting the following equi equitable relief. Right. I, a preliminary injunction. One, prohibiting defendants, truth and sang, as well as any persons or entities acting by, for, or through them from further disclosing, dissem disseminating, or publicly sharing any private communications, including plaintiffs or their associates, including but not limited to recordings, live streams, or related content obtained within, without the consent of all parties, in violation of the Pennsylvania Wiretap Act. Two, directing defendants to cease the use of crowdsourcing or fundraising platforms, including but not limited to GoFundMe, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Pay, and YouTube Super Chats, to solicit funds for their legal defence or any other purpose related to this litigation. All fundraising efforts must be conducted with full. Transparency and accuracy regarding the nature of the defence and defendants shall be prohibited from making misleading statements about the case. Right, now I did mention, I hung up, but um, but it's got one. But you see, then I sat down and I thought, you know what, that's a different case. That is a totally separate case from this. Right? And they... Like, the C, uh, the P Fox and B Sox made the mistake by not putting all this into that their hearing, their injunction thing, because they went for um. Hold oh, on, let me find it again. They was going for. God, oh, where is it? Oh God. So much paperwork. For protection orders, right? They were going for protection orders, which meant they just wanted a protection order put out there so that this YouTuber could not approach them, contact them, or anything like that. Right? 
where this is totally different. This isn't a protection order. This is about bullying. And I don't know if you, when you've been at school, you've been bullied at all. I know I was, slightly. Not much, because I knew I had bigger brothers <laughs> in the school. So, it was like, that anyone said something nasty about me, my friends would say, do you know who her brothers are? And then the faces would drop. Yeah. So, I had a little bit, but not a lot. But it's not nice. And today, with the technology today, it's not, it doesn't, like, if you got bullied at school, when I was at school, you got bullied at school, you got home, and that was it. You didn't get nothing else at home. You could go out and forget about it for a few hours or so until the next day. Yeah? But now, with the technology, people are on the internet, they're on the phones, they are constant. And this is what, we went through the depositions or whatever they wrote them, whatever they wrote, right? We went through their records yesterday, all their transcripts, and what they went through. They've had people come to their homes, everything. Right, some of them have had people come to their homes. Now that is very unworthy. Knowing it's like them saying, "We know where you live. We know your husband works these times." You know what I mean? So I can understand why they are doing this now. People have unalived themselves for bullying through online sites and everything. Because it's continuous, it doesn't have a break. When I was at school, you had that stop where you left school, it all stopped. You went back to school, maybe pick up again, maybe didn't. You know what I mean? So, but you had a break. Nowadays, people, children, and adults, and adults, do not get a break from me. And it's nothing worse than waking up. And thinking, God, what's going to be on my phone today? And seeing messages on your phone pop up. And not wanting to open that message because you just dread what they're going to say. Not wanting to come online onto your YouTube channel and talk because of people then having a go at you about what you've said on your life. And it's not just having a go at them about what they said on their lives. That's not the point. The point is... They are using derogatory wording as well. So, <clears throat> we will continue. Prohibiting, number three, prohibiting defendants Trude and Seng along with their associates from making any defamatory and disparaging statements regarding plaintiffs Seth Rogers, Tony Mathis, at Night Media, LLC, or any other named individuals, whether directly or indirectly through any platform or medium to prevent further harm to plaintiffs' reputations and emotional distress. Right, now I've got, where is it? Did I put it on my stream yard? Did I close it? No, um, I think it's in my downloads. Let's have a look. Oh. No. <laughs> God, sorry about that. I'm trying to find something. I clicked on something else. Um... Is this the one? I'm not sure if I'll be able to get... Hold on. I meant to upload it, didn't I? Hold on, I'll upload it onto here so I can put it on, okay? 
because I think that's the one because this is disgusting what was put out today and I'm going I'm going to say trigger warning Right, take a warning. Let's just, just take this, remove this from me. And this, because this is not nice. If you don't want to hear it, don't want to see it, please walk away. Right. Deeply disturbing. Warning. Some viewers may find the following footage deeply disturbing. Warning. Some viewers may find the following footage deeply disturbing. Warning. Right? You've had your warnings. Because now I'm putting this up. So if you want, you've got a couple of seconds. I'll give you a couple of seconds. If you don't want to see this, please turn away from your screen. Turn your volume down, whatever you have to do, walk away. Right? This is what SF Investigates, that's Steve Fisher, put on his Twitter account. <coughs> to clarify, the purpose of my opposition is not to dismiss their entire complaint, but spe specifically to challenge the path seeking preliminary injunction relief. I want the complaint to proceed because it will lead to Seth Rogers being charged with sex crimes against a minor, in my opinion. There is no worse crime in the world than sexually essaying and owing an underage person unable to legally consent. Aris and SOs should not walk freely amongst us, and as of now, Seth Rogers is walking free. Although I don't expect any legitimate journalists to attend their scheduled press conference, if any do, I hope they ask whether Seth will admit to his sex crimes against minors. Get that down. Take that down. That is the whole reason these people have had this uh, put up against them for things like that. Now, what they are saying, right? I know I've only got onto whatever page of this. What they are actually saying is you can talk about Sebastian Rogers. You can talk about the case. Just stop with the intimidation, the harassment, the bullying, everything. Just stop all that. Stop it. Because that is not right. So that is what this case is about. To stop all that bullying, intimidation and harassment and people going to their homes. You know what I mean? It's not right. And then he goes and puts that up. Oh, that ain't the only thing he's done. But we're not going to get there yet. We've got to get through this. Right? Four. Directing defendants, Trude and Seng, Seng, to cease any attempts to portray, disclose or re release the private information, identities or family details of plaintiffs and associate individuals, which means don't go digging and finding out where they live, where the mother lives, where the father lives, where they aren't lives, the uncle, the grandchildren, wherever. Don't. Go dox them. Don't put their addresses out there. Don't put their place of work out there. Because you're putting their family in harm. Right? whether through social media, public forums, or any other channels to protect the safety and privacy of those involved. 
That's why I've deleted all the addresses. I have. If you want the full version without my deleting the addresses, then the Discord is in is pinned to the top of the chat, and I will put it up here for those. No, not that one. I need a new one. I need a new one. The one that will take you straight to the section for Sebastian. So I'll just get that up and I'll put it up then on. Just bear with me. Right. Mm -hmm. Up here. Uh, stream yard. There it is. Right. Click on that link and it'll take you to where the links are for this. Well, there's one link. Click on that link then and it'll come open up and it'll scroll down the page and it'll give you two PDFs files to download. Okay. So that's why I... I don't agree with putting it out there on YouTube, right? I put it on my Discord because it's not public. It's by only people I'll give the link to. So, let's carry on. All during defendants choose and send to reimburse plaintiffs for any cost incurred in addressing or mitigating harm caused by the defendant, unauthorised disclosures in defamatory conduct. As we read yesterday, the dog handler has lost work. She's a captain in the army. She's lost work with her dogs because people don't want the, the, the negative attention brought onto them. So they're not employing her no more to do any work with her dogs for them. That's something she can't afford. Yes, she's a captain. She might be, have a good wage. Right? But she's got two dogs to look after and train. And it doesn't come cheap. Mandate the defendants inform their audiences, including followers, supporters, subscribers and associates, to cease and desist from all defamatory, harassing or threatening behaviour. I said that yesterday. They need to say, do not contact these people. Do not acknowledge these YouTubers. Do not go into their chat. Do not say anything. You know what I mean? Don't go to their homes. Don't put out their addresses. Don't do anything. Just let them alone. And to provide evidence to the court within seven days confirming that such instructions have been issued in good faith. My action take long. One live. And keep repeating it every so often through the live. And then they've got that live to show the judge. Yep. Or make a video and put it up on your YouTube channel. Make a video. Don't go live. Just make a video. Granting such other and further preliminary relief as this honourable court deems just and appropriate to prevent ongoing and irreparable harm to plaintiffs. There we go again. Okay. This is a memorandum in support of petition for preliminary injunction and filing an injunction and other equitable relief. Just all the plaintiffs again. 
Right. Oh no, I think we've missed something. Um, all the plain chiefs respectfully submit this memorandum in support of their petition for a preliminary injunction and final injunction seeking immediate relief from the coordinated, malicious and dangerous campaign of harassment, defamation and obstruction orchestrated by defenders Stephanie J. Trude and Jeff Jessica Lee Seng. Remember, these aren't the only two. There are more. There are more. Plaintiffs seeking immediate injunction to prevent further irreparable harm to their personal safety, reputations and well-being and to protect the integrity of the investigation into Sebastian Rogers' disappearance. Factual background. Right. This case stems from a criminal enterprise led by defendants which operates through coordinated online harassment, defamation and the incitement of threats against plaintiffs. Defendants' actions have severely obstructed the ongoing search for missing teenager Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers and have caused in irreparable harm to the plaintiffs and their efforts. Right, wrong, wrong YouTuber now. Right, if wrong the plaintiffs, the YouTuber will not block any of these uh, people coming on her, onto, into her chat. She lets them, and she just tells her members and her other subscribers, click on the three dots, and you can block them. So everyone who sees these messages come up, just click on this, those three spots and you will not see them again. She'll see the messages, but they won't. She needs these messages to keep coming through, let them keep coming through, because then that gives her more to show the judge. One woman keeps it to subscribers only, subscribers and members. So if you're not, normally you can go and watch a channel, even if you're not subscribed to them. But if they're live, you can watch, but you can't comment. Why? Right? When my channel is open to everyone at the moment, but if I was in their positions, I would put it down to subscribers only. This case stems from criminal enterprise, defamation and incitement to threats against plaintiffs. Defendants' actions have severely ongoing search for missing teenagers Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers and have caused irreparable harm to plaintiffs and their efforts. This memorandum outlines a pattern of illegal and harmful, harmful conduct engaged in by defenders, which not only violates Pennsylvania Corrupt Organisations Act, but also federal laws governing cyber harassment and criminal intimidation. It, it is. It's cyber bullying. Because it's being done online. And being said online. It's cyber bullying. Since February 2024, defenders Trude and Seng have launched a coordinated malicious campaign to undermine the search efforts. I find Jake using their social media platforms to defame and harass the plaintiffs. Their actions designed to mislead the public, create confusion and discredit those associated with the search have crossed into dangerous and unlawful behaviour. Timeline of defenders' campaign of defamation and harassment. Since February 2024, defenders Trude and Zeng have launched a coordinated and malicious campaign to undermine the search efforts for Sebastian Wayne. Using their blah blah blah, designed to mislead, blah blah blah. Right, we've heard your lap before. Aye, we get down to this bit. A lot of this is just repeating itself. February 25th, 2024, Sebastian Rogers was last seen by his mother, Katie Craig, for the following day, authorities initiated the search. That is the last day he was seen by Katie, but then he went to bed at 9 o'clock. March 2024. Defendants began their online campaign of positive coverage and accurate information. Fair enough. End of March 2024. 
defendants began accusing plaintiffs, including Seth Rogers, of using the search for personal gain. These false and malicious claims were disseminated to a wide online audience, and it was. April 2024, defendants escalated their efforts by organising followers to two defame and harass individuals involved in the search. The declaration of Andrea Griffin provides detailed accounts of how she and others were targeted with false accusations which severely harmed her personal and professional reputation. That's in her declaration. May 10th, 2024, Seth Rogers retained Tony Mathis pro bono, which is true, to assist in media efforts regarding the search for his son. This engagement of legal and media support led to increased harassment with defenders targeting both Rogers and Mathis, falsely accusing them of exploiting the case. What Tony wanted to do was try and bring Chris and Katie into it as well, so we'd have all three parents talking. But Chris and Katie weren't having none of that. No. Defendants, August to October 2024. Campaign continues using platforms such as TikTok, YouTube and Twitter to amplify defamatory narratives rallying their followers to participate in the online harassment of plaintiffs. September, September 2024, Night Media increased the reward for information related to Sebastian's dis- disappearance. In retaliation, Defender Trug made direct threats on public forums stating, It is a effing mission. It is my effing mission to take Tony the F down. Video QB chain of command timestamp 426. Defendant Seng continued to amplify these threats, including online communities to engage in harassment. I don't know because, as I said, I went on. Um, which channel was it? Oh, I'm going to go back on. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I think it was Defender saying her channel. When he's watching, I think it is. I'm not sure. Um, it was her channel I went on one day, and I'm not joking, I think I was on there for about, what, five minutes? I came out of it. Well, nope, not having that. Not listening to that. Societies appear to be subject every now and then to periods of moral panic. It's nature is presented in a stylized and stereotypical fashion by the mass media. The moral bar- barricades are manned by editors, bishops, politicians and other right thinking people. Socially accredited experts pronounce their diagnosis and solutions, ways of coping are evolved or, more often, resorted to. Sometimes a panic passes over and is forgotten. At terror times it has more serious and long-lasting repercussions and might produce such those in legal and social policy, or even in the way society conceives itself. We are witnessing on one such moment a moral panic, fueled not by traditional media whatsoever, but by the fast reach of social networks and well coordinated attacks. Searches as sensitive as a 15 year old Sebastian Rogers demonstrates a public panic driven by coordinated misinformation can distort the very foundations of justice. The defendants in this case have released a coordinated uh, just give me some oh god my phone is a pain have released a coordinated campaign of cyber harassment, false allegations and witness, witness intimidations in the search for 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers. What began as rumours has now escalated into a full-scale complete conspiracy led by six or more individuals who have weaponized social media to obstruct justice and silence those trying to find this missing child. The criminal justice system teaches on a dangerous Principle, 
precious precious parts but cells in such cases where fear and misinformation threaten to replace reason and fairness i couldn't be a lawyer because i can't even say half of these words are, are using you know what i mean defendants chug and Seng have pushed the search with sebastian wayne drake rogers to that pressing precipice suppose so whatever here, the defenders have come to bias to spread defamatory, spread defamatory, inflammatory, flash falsehoods, creating a toxic environment that has delayed and obstructed the search for this child. They have organised their followers and online communities to harass, witness, intimidate, investigate and flood up tip lines with false leads, all while spreading the false narrative that Sebastian's father and his allies, including Dr. Banton and Jack Nye, are involved in criminal activity. Okay, these actions not only obstruct the investigation but have sown chaos and diverted critical resources. Corrupt organisations that coordinate criminal enterprise. Defendants' action falls squarely within the scope of corrupt organisations. This Pennsylvania statute is designed to prevent and penalise. So my phone just flashed up. Penalise, organised crime and corrupt enterprises. Defendants have engaged in a pattern of racketeering-like behaviour by organising a coordinated campaign of online harassment and defamation. Their activities involve multiple individuals acting in concert to cause harm to the plaintiffs and obstruct the search for Sebastian Rogers. Defendants repeated an organised conduct targeting specific individuals for harassment, inciting followers to harass and spread false malicious information, meets the legal standard for a pattern of racketeering activity. I don't know, I don't know, nothing, know nothing about racketeering, so I don't know. All I know about racketeering is where it involves money, where you're passing money from one person Maybe getting it cleaned, as they're called, cleaned, giving it to one person, coming out clean, and then up to another person. You know what I mean? That's the only thing I know about racketeering, I believe. Right? For instance, I've used social media platforms as tools for the corrupt purposes, engaging in defamation, harassment, and threats aimed at plaintiffs. Defendants Trugan Seng, Federal Cyber Harassment and Intimidation Laws. Defendants Trugan Seng, along with their followers from an enterprise, operate with a clear objective to defame and obstruct plaintiffs in their efforts to locate Sebastian Rogers. This enterprise has a structure and organised purpose as evidenced by the coordinated efforts and communication among defendants and their followers. Defamation and harassment claims under Pennsylvania law. Defendants choose and send along with their followers form an enterprise operating with a clear objective to defame, discredit and obstruct plaintiffs in their efforts to locate Sebastian Rogers. This enterprise has a structure and organised purpose as evidenced by the coordinated effort and communication among defendants and their followers. Standard for a preliminary injunction. At night is seeking a preliminary injunction preventing defendants from continuing the coordinated campaign of harassment, defamation and obstruction, and therefore by stopping further in irreparable harm. The elements must be established by a party seeking a preliminary injunction or set forth in Overland Enterprise and Corp v Gladstone per Partners. A party seeking a preliminary injunction must show that an injunction is necessary to prevent immediate irreparable harm that cannot be adequately compensated by damages. Second, the party must show that Greater injury would result from refusing an injunction. It would. If this, this injunction is not allowed, it would just say, tell these YouTubers, oh, we're safe, we can say what the hell we like. We can threaten, we can harass, 
You know what I mean? And it will continue. Like that bit of work I've just read out. Allowing people to put stuff like that out. That's disgusting. I'm sorry. Right. So. Uh, greater injury would result from refusing an injunction than from granting it. It really would. And it's not just them. It's like I say, I'm only a small fish in the pond. Let them threaten me. Because believe me, they know. Right? Because I will go straight to this company. Straight to dog and straight to whoever. And then it will be international. Because I'm in the UK. No one will stop me talking about... I do not threaten anyone. I do not harass anyone. So please, don't come over here harassing me. Just because I'm talking about Sebastian Rogers, Katie and Chris or even Seth and Tony sometimes. Right. Third, the party must show that a preliminary injunction will probably properly restore the parties to their status as is as it existed immediately prior to the alleged wrongful conduct. Fourth, the party seeking information seeking an injunction will show that the activity it seeks to strain is actionable. That is right. That is its right to relief is clear, and that the wrong is manifest. Or, in other words, words must show that is likely to prevail on the merits. Fifth, the party must show that the injunction it seeks is reasonably suited to debate the offending activity. Sixth, and finally, the party seeking an injunction must show that a preliminary injunction will not adversely affect the public. In, in says told you, the finally the party seeking injunction will show that a preliminary injunction will not adversely it won't affect my public interest. No, it won't affect me. They go it. You know what I mean? It will just curtail any other of these YouTubers who think they can go on and say what the hell they like about some YouTubers. Right? I've now set my videos for where they can't even mix my audio, you know, mixing of audio, you know, mixing of video, nothing. You can't do none of that no more. I've set it. When I go, when I put this up on YouTube, I go through and I click off all of them. All right? Before it was just embedding, you know, I click off all the others as well now. So they can't, they can't use my YouTube videos, I can't do nothing with them. Unless they're on my live and they download it. Right? I think that's the only way I can go. But I don't know, I'll have to look into that. Right, there's a more right, argument. A relief is necessary to prevent immediate and irreparable harm that cannot be compensated by damages. It can't. Right? When you've been bullied and intimidated and harassed to the point where you're broken, you don't want to even look at your phone when your phone pings. Money isn't going to fix that. No amount in the world is going to money in the world is going to fix that. Oh, right. right, my phone keeps beeping. The record established that a preliminary injunction is necessary to prevent further harm to the plane feet. Yes, it would help, really help. Defenders have engaged in coordinated campaign by cyber harassment, defamation, and obstruction. Right? Now, okay, these two that's in this lawsuit, right? Grannies, whatever, and barbecue lady, whatever. They say they've never spoke to each other. Never. 
right? I've not spoken to half of these YouTubers on here. Right, never. But it doesn't stop me from hearing about what they say or what they've done and even watching them. You know what I mean? So if they hear, oh, YouTubers are going to go about Seth or YouTubers are going to go about, oh, I'll have to go over and watch that. You know what I mean? And then they're picking up and they're going off on their channels and doing the same. You don't have to know someone or be in contact with someone Right, as noted in oh, blah, 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 an injury is considered irreparable if the damages can only be estimated by conjecture and not by an accurate pecuniary standard. In this case, the emotional and reputational damage suffered by plaintiffs due to the defendants' coordinated attacks is impossible to quantify. Moreover, defendants' campaign has directly interfered with the investigation into the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers, causing further irreparable harm by delaying justice and potentially endangering the missing child. Greater injury would result from refusing an injunction. If this court denies the injunction, defenders will continue the cyber harassment and defamation campaign. They will, resulting in continued damage to plaintiffs' reputations, personal safety and professional standing, which it will. The nature of the threats, threats made by defendants include incitement of their online followers to engage in further harassment places plaintiffs in imminent danger. Well, they've already had, there's one who had a uh, form, uh, supposed to be FBI postal person, come to their home. We've had one where someone drove up in an SUV and was looking through his windows, knocking on his door. Have they got to be, hold on, that's my door, oh, hold on, who's at my door? Peering out the window and from the corner to see who's at the door. Right? It's like, I swear to God, I'm going to ask my neighbours, because where I live in a what they call a multi, there's one, two, three, four, six flats. And it's what the class is two singles, which is one one bedroom, and four doubles, which means each each double has two bedrooms, big enough for a double bed to go in. And they are big enough for a double bed to go in. Right? And today, when I was leaving to go to the shop, I press the lift, which I hate. But I'm not walking down the floor to the floors I have to. I'd be so I'd be so fit if I did, but I think my knees would be gone if I did. My knees would be fucking knackered. Anyway, so as the lift opened, a group of lads come out of the lift, so I stepped right back into the side. Then I was looking for this flat, and they went towards mine, and I went, excuse me, who are you looking for? And they said some name, and I said, never heard of it. And they've got this key, and apparently they're trying to get into this, my neighbour's flat. And they said, it must be the wrong flat because the key's not working. So they guessed back in the lift with me. And I said, perhaps it's on the wrong floor. No, 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 I've got the key to, the floor, uh, to, this, to that floor. I went, um, well, it's in another block then. But it's highly suspicious that a group of lads, you know what I mean, are trying keys and doors. I went, I would have reported it to the caretaker, but our caretaker's hardly ever in his office no more because he's got four other blocks, three other blocks to look after, three other multis, right? So he's hardly ever in our multi anymore. But when I see him, I'm going to let him know that a group of lads were in the block. And I'm going to ask my, I'm going to get, I don't care what anyone says, I'm going to get that um, uh, ring doorbell. 
because it's not just protecting my property, it's protecting my other neighbor, my neighbor's properties as well. And I don't think my two, I think two of my neighbors will have no problem about it. Because they'll opposite me at the end of the uh, foyer area. Right? My one neighbor next to me, the one side, maybe, and the other one. I don't think there's anyone in there. I don't think the other bloke would have any problem with it. If they did, I wouldn't have one. So I might ask them first if they have a problem. Right? Because what if I have gotten the lift and not watched what those lads were doing? What if they have tried at my door? Then they'd have been in trouble. If they'd have gone and tried, I'd have been going, excuse me? What do you think you're doing? Move away from the door. Now. Right, and you know what I'd have done? I'd have walked up to my door and hit my doorbell. Because then once I hit that doorbell, it starts recording. It starts recording and it'll come up on my phone. I should have done that today, actually. I should have gone up, walked up to my flat and just hit my doorbell. Because then it would have come up on my phone. Because I, it won't come, if I'd have been outside the block, outside of where I live, then it wouldn't have come up on my phone. I have to stay within distance of my internet for it to come up on my phone. That's why I want a ring doorbell. Because then it will come up on my phone even when I'm nowhere near my flat. Hi. So I'm definitely going to look, look into getting one. I don't care what my, my son says, oh, you can't do that. My daughter's saying this. I'm going, I'm sorry, but I live here on my own. I live here on my own. I want some protection. And if they know I've got a ring doorbell, they're not going to go knocking, come in, try and get in my flat, are they? Because it's got to be recorded. So... And if the council say, oh, you can't have that on your door, I say, well, you do something about the security then in this block. Because the main doors are open constantly when they should be locked. And you should only be able to get in if you hit the buzzer to someone's flat or if you've got the f uh, fob to get in. But it's not, it's open continuously because apparently we've got workers coming in and out. Not that I see any coming in and out. But you know what I mean? So, I'm definitely going to get up to today. The injunction will restore the status quo. The plaintiffs seek to restore the status quo by preventing defendants from continuing the malicious online campaign. campaign, campaign. The injunction will prohibit further defamation, threats, harassment, thus restoring, restoring the plaintiff's ability to conduct their professional and personal lives without the looming threat reputational harm caused by defending. This would return the parties to the status before the wrongful conduct began in early 2024. Clear right to relief. Plaintiffs have established a clear right to relief. Defendants' actions to constitute defamation, cyber harassment and violation, blah, blah, blah. Right? As well as federal laws such as the declarations and video evidence submitted by the plaintiffs provide undeniable proof of defendants. So they've all got the video proof of it. Coordinating harmful behaviour, given this clear record of wrongdoing, plaintiffs are likely to prevail on the merits of their claims. The injunction is reasonably suited to about the defendant's activity. The request injun requested injunction is narrowly tailored to prevent further harm. Plaintiffs seek to enjoin defendants from engaging in any further defamatory, defamatory statements, online harassment or incitement of followers to threat more harm plaintiffs. The injunction is designed to prevent further violations of law and protect plaintiffs from, going, from ongoing harassment without placing undue restrictions on defendants' ability to engage in lawful conduct. 
The public interest will be served by granting the injunction. The public interest strongly favours granting the injunction. Defending cyber harassment and defamation campaign have undermined the integrity of the search for a missing child, endangered the well-being of those involved and set a dangerous precedent for online behaviour. Stopping this coordinated criminal enterprise is not only in the interest of plaintiffs but also in the interest of protecting the public from further harm caused by unchecked cyber harassment and defamation. You see, we should be able to go to YouTube and put a complaint in with YouTube, right? But YouTube, you can. I believe we can put complaints in with YouTube if there's a channel doing this. But YouTube don't do anything about it, as far as I know. bit like Facebook, if someone puts them on, up on their Facebook page and you see it, or someone tells, and you report that Facebook page, it can take months, if that, for them to block that page. You know what I mean? The balance of harm overwhelmingly favours the plaintiffs the continued defamation and harassment have caused, and will continue to cause irreparable damage to plaintiffs, reputations, safety and personal well-being. Defendants, on the other hand, will suffer no legitimate harm if the injunction is granted. They will merely be prohibited from engaging in illegal behaviour. Exactly. So you've got all this. We've got 101 pages, I'm not going through it all. Right, because a lot of it's just repeating what I've already read. Right. Oh, it just says the above order preliminary injunction shall remain in full force and effect pending the final disposition of this matter by this court. Uh, money damages requested? No. Is this a class action suit? No. Is right? Notice to defend civil defendants. You have been sued in court. If you wish to defend against a claim set forth in the following pages, you must take action within 20 days after this complaint and notice are served by entering a written appearance personally or by attorney and filing it in writing with the court. Your defence or objections to the claim set forth against you. You are warned that if you fail to do so, the case may proceed without you, and a judgment may be entered against you by the court without further notice for any money claimed in the complaint, or for any claim or relief requested by the plaintiff. You may lose money or property or other rights important to you. You should take this paper to your lawyer at once. If you do not have a lawyer, go to the te to go to our telephone. Go to or telephone the office set for below. This office can provide you with information about hiring a lawyer. If you can afford to hire a lawyer, this office may be able to provide you with information about agencies that may offer legal services to eligible persons at a reduced fee or no fee. Now yeah, that's just in what, Spanish or something. Right. So it's all the same again. All the same again. So, but they have to put everything in. You know what I mean? They have to put every piece of information they have done, every video, every every phone call, everything.
All right, so. Right, it's got here, on that same day, defendant Trug used the cease and desist letter showing in Exhibit 26, which we went through yesterday, to her advantage by leaving it to solicit growth from me donations under the false pretense of being silenced from covering the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. They're not being silenced to about Sebastian Rogers. They just want them to stop the harassment, the intimidation, everything, everything. People going to their homes, they want it all to stop. That's what they want. You can carry on talking about Sebastian Rogers to you blue in the face if you like. But just stop this harassment. Right? We're all here for the same reason. We're all covering this case for the same reason. And that is to help. Well, we can't find him. YouTubers, if you're not out there on the ground, will not get within a foot of finding him. Right? And there are YouTubers out, that are out there on the ground looking and doing a great job. They really are. But there's no intimidation as far as you know going towards them. Only towards certain other YouTubers. And it's all wrong. It's none of this should be going on. But here for one person, and that person is Sebastian Wayne Dray Crodgers. We're here for this lad. This lad. This lad. The same lad, but older. We're here for him. You stop. I just wish this channel to stop this malicious talk. If you don't like a YouTuber for what they say, then that's fine. You don't have to listen to them. You don't. Right? You just go about what you do. There's some YouTubers I don't like. I don't like what they say. So I don't listen to them. I don't sit there and watch them for two hours and go, you know what? I've just watched such and such and she was saying this and this and this and this and oh, she was doing this and saying that. I don't do that. I haven't got the time to waste on watching YouTube talking BS in my eyes. That's just my opinion. Right? I've done it to ball on Betty when she's been going off on one of her rants. It's quite comical, really, when she goes off on one of her rants. But I switch off. I switch off. As soon as she starts going off on one of her rants, I will switch off. Because I don't want to listen to that. And that's what she says. If you don't like what I'm saying, leave. You don't have to watch these YouTubers. You don't have to have anything to do with these YouTubers. You do what you want to do. Let them do what they want to do. You don't need to sit there having a go about them, threatening them, harassing them. Right? I don't like Tony Mathis, but that is Seth's opinion, uh, choice to have Tony Mathis. And if Seth finds some solitude in having Tony Mathis there, then that's fine. That's his choice, not mine. I don't have a say in who Seth talks to and who he doesn't. This is Seth, the father of Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. And if he wants to have 10 uh, criminals helping him, then that is fine. That is his choice. As I've always said before, those who have not sinned, cast the first stone. 
those who have not sinned, cast the first stone. Because not one of us can say we haven't done some we should have done in our lives. I've done some stupid stuff in my life. Oh yeah. I did. Right. So I am not going to judge people for what they do because it's like when my daughter was growing up, she wore this lovely pair of my trousers once. We had a christening. And I had these two pairs of trousers, one in blue and one in white. And she asked if she could wear the white ones. I said, yeah. So she wore the white ones, I wore my blue ones. We went to the christening. Then after the christening, we had like a little get-together back at a hall first. We was at a hall first where we had like a little party thing and whatever. Where my back went on me even more. And then I had someone tread on my foot and I couldn't... The, the pain in my foot and the pain in my back, I didn't know what to do. Right? And then we went back to their house. And by then, my daughter had been home and changed and got out of these white trousers and put on what she liked to wear as well, which was short skirts. Right? A woman across the road had the nerve to judge my daughter for wearing a short skirt. Did I let me upon that woman? And people go, don't say anything to her yet. Don't you? And I said, no, I'm not going to say nothing today because I found out on the day of the christening. I'm not going to say nothing today because I promised you lot I will not cause any trouble. This is not my day. This is my friend's day, their little boy's day. Right? I'm not going to ruin it. But by God, the next day I had her. The next day I went over and I knocked on her door and I had her fully. I was ripping into her because she's a mother who doesn't even know where her daughter is and has to phone the police at 11 o'clock at night. I know where my daughter is. I know where my daughter is at 6 o'clock at night. She's at home having a dinner and then getting ready to go having a bath, doing her homework, make sure she's got all her homework done for the Monday and going to bed. So I knew exactly where my daughter was and she's having a go about my daughter because she's wearing a short skirt and the name she called her. I could have ripped her head off her fucking shoulders. Right? But that was then. And I'd still do the same now, I think. If anyone said anything derogatory about my children, about my son and my daughter, and they're both in their 30s now, but I'd still rip the, he the heads off the shoulders. Because I'm a mother. And that's my right as a mother to do that. To protect their children. Doesn't matter how old they are. I will protect them till my dying breath. Anyway, but what you can't do is what they've been doing. And they should know better. They should know better not to do that. It's a, they should re, did they not realise that what they was doing was bullying? Was uh, cyberbullying? And that's even worse, actually, than bullying, cyberbullying, because it's being done online. No one can see your face. No one knows who you are. But cyberbullying. Right? Now, I've got some... Where is it? Is it on here for you? Yes. Right, now yesterday... Right, let's just stop that. Let's take this down a minute. You know, yesterday when we was going through the documents, the um, the exhibits, yeah? And there's that man at the door. And I was going, right, this man. Remember that picture? And we was going, who's that man? This is outside Hong's house. This is the man that got out of that car, right? Went up to his garage doors. Noticed, well, he got, he pulled up on his drive, noticed the camera, so pulled his car back a little bit, thinking the car, the camera wouldn't get his car. <coughs> 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 then 
Then got out of the car, left the car door open and walked off. Peering through the garage windows, peering through the living room windows, then knocked on the door. Then he noticed the cameras again, so he backed away. And as, But before he left, he went and looked through the windows again in the living room. This is that man, right? Outside Hong's house. Now, I was watching this YouTube channel last night, and this was pulled up on a Facebook page today, and it was up on this, uh, someone's YouTube channel, I think, last night. Look at that man, right? His face, beard, glasses, balding head, and look at this man, face. Looks like a bit of a beard there, glasses, balding head. And if that man is the same, if these two are the same, I'm not saying they are, this is just allegedly, if that man is this man, he's sitting behind Chris. Then we have this one. This, I believe, this is the mob crew. I'm not sure, because I can't really see it very good. But this is Justin for All, or Clutch the Pearls. Shang. Right? Look at this man. Glasses, sort of like a beard, bulging head. Is he the same man? There. That one looks more like this one. Really does. You're not telling me we've got three men who look the same. Like this man, this man, and that man. Apparently, there's three men, could be three men who look exactly the same. It could be triplets, could be, but I don't know, but I think this man, I'm not sure whether it's this man, I'm not sure, but what I should have done, I should have edited this picture and the other picture and put them together, all right? And I'll do that for tomorrow. And I'll put this up on my uh, community page. And on my X account. And on Discord. Okay? And on my Facebook page. So please, if you're not joined my Facebook, if you're not following me, please follow me on there because I put a lot of information sometimes on there. I put a lot of information on my X account. If you're not following me on X, please go and follow me on X. The links in the description. If you want the files that we've been looking at, then go to my Discord. Right. Now, let's just take this off. Oh, no, I can't. Sorry. Can't do it that way, haven't I? I have now got another piece of information. For us to look at. Right. This is 18 pages long. I'm just going to let work on this one. Oh, just change my voice over. That sounds like a kiggy's one. Oh, God. What have I got there, Macy? Try Libby. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's going to work on this one, so I don't have to read this one out. But it will go through every little bit of it. Unless I can try to go. 
Right, we'll go through this bit first. Right, it's the Court of Common Pleas of Delaware County, Pennsylvania. Cover sheet. Notice the filing of motion or petition under local rules of civil procedure. Case. Caption. At Night Media LLC, lead plaintiff, via Pla Stephanie Jo Trude and Je Jessica Ling Seng. Civil case number C4. What? Motion pursuant to Rule 208.1. I don't know what that means, and I don't really care. Right, let's just go there. Right. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, I'll turn the volume down a little bit. This is really just right here, and then we can go on. Why did you plant it out like that? I've never done that before when I've had the voice options. Right, so I'll turn the volume back and hold on. I'll share the screen with you first. All right. Uh, I'm, gonna... I'm, to all right. I'm trying to get it so that I can jump past this. Right. Let's see what it's just now. I can have a bit of rest. Someone actually got his number because it's there, he's put it up there and went on to the Tennessee private investigators, whatever, put that number in and couldn't find him. So how interesting is that? That apparently she couldn't find him. And yet he's a Tennessee he's a private investigator licensed for Tennessee. But when she put his number in, his name and his number or whatever, nothing come up. I hope you can all hear this voiceover. Right, I hope you can. What I, I might do actually, I might just stop that voiceover because... Um, Right, um, right, we'll start from a true. A true and accurate copy of my Tennessee private investigator's license is attacked as Exhibit A. My standing as an unparty opposer in this case was from the plaintiff's attempts, attempt to secure a preliminary and permanent injunction which would undermine the integrity of the investigation by silencing media personalities. Um, when since... To my knowledge, has those two YouTubers 
Sing media. Can anyone tell me that? Have they ever said they're media? Oh, I'm not media. I'm just a YouTuber. I'm not media. And so are they. They're just YouTubers. They're not media. So how are, we, how are the silencing media personalities? They're not media. So how can they be silencing media personalities? Right. Oh, well, there you Obstructing public dialogue and acquiring communications and data. Right, so it goes, we could undermine the integrity of the investigation by silencing media personalities, which they are not. Obstructing public dialogue, acquiring communications and data. That's it. That's it. That's what they're trying to stop. They don't want to give out their communications or any of their data. <coughs> and that's it. That's why he's done it. Right? Because they don't want to give out the communications and data. I am also mentioned in the sworn affidavit attacked as exhibits to the plaintiffs pleading. <coughs> this action will not do not only stifle transparency but also distort the narrative to favour at night media and unlicensed entity with a reckless agenda that disregards the best interest of the missing fifteen year old Sebastian. Rogers. Since now this is all by SF Investigates. He put this up on Twitter <coughs> and he done it online. He did it online. He submitted this online to the courts. From what I can understand. Right? <coughs> Since announcing their intention to investigate the disappearance more than 60 days ago, not a single plaintiff associated with Acknight Media or Grain Dog Chapman has travelled to Tennessee. But they don't need to. They don't need to travel to Tennessee. Because they're not actually doing foot searches. They're looking at the information in what? is clusters in the back, background information, they're looking at that sort of, right, they're not like them on the ground, searching, they're doing other work, so they don't need to be in Tennessee for that. Oh, what's my phone telling me to do? Stand up, no, my legs hurt, I'm not standing up. Right, has has travelled to Tennessee where Sebastian went, Rogers went missing. Despite this, the widely claimed interference in the investigation and search effort. Yes, because people are being harassed to the point where people are thinking, well, if they're being harassed, I don't want nothing to do with them. And so if they're not having nothing to do with these YouTubers, or this dog handler, then what makes you think any decent person would come forward? Yeah? Knowing that their name could be put out there. And these people could harass them. Because there's no one stopping them from harassing them. How do we know there are people out there who have already been harassed and told be quiet, do not say anything. How do we know that? We don't. This is all in my opinion, by the way. Right? We don't know. But it's hindering the search because people are backing away from this case. They don't want nothing to do with this case because of all the BS, the I wouldn't say it's BS that the intimidation and harassment, that is not BS. But because of all that harassment and intimidation, people are backing away from this case. Oh, I don't want to be nip. Nope, nope, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? How many organisations and groups 
of gonging to help search. Knock divers was wrong. He backed off because he was warned. He was threatened, I believe. Full on betting. Right? She sent she was sent to prison because apparently she broke some of the protection orders. Don't know how. Don't know how because she wasn't talking about Chris and Katie, she was talking about the vigil and the bike ride and all that lot, but I don't know how she broke but she did. Right, apparently. And she had to go back she was in prison for seventeen hours and then she's had to go back to court over that. So she could have said, you know what? Fuck this. No. My life is in danger here. I can't carry on with this case. I'm backing off. Like so many others have done. Like so many others. But she didn't. And she's fighting that case. She's still fighting it today. So you may not like Bullhorn Betty. Sometimes I don't like what she says. She may not like what I say. If she ever listened to my videos, I don't know. But that is either here or there. We are YouTubers and we're here for one thing. And that is Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. We're not here for Seth or Chris or Katie or the B Sox or anyone else. We're not. We want to try and help. And the only way I can help is by talking about him and putting his name out there. Putting his picture out there. Putting on Facebook, putting on Twitter. You know what I mean? This is getting ridiculous to the point you now where they need to be stopped. This cyber bullying needs to stop. The widely claimed interference and investigation search efforts that actions demonstrate a blatant disregard for the reality on the ground and highlight their lack of genuine involvement in the search for Sebastian. Oh, just because you're on the ground, right? You're more of a priority, are you? You know what I mean? No, they're working in the background. They don't need to be on the ground. They're working in the background. In contrast, I, the non party opposer, have been actively involved as a licensed investigator and search and rescue specialist. Okay. Conducting both air and ground search for, for Sebastian Rogers, meaning using his drone. Yeah. Searches have also been conducted with, with government and private search teams including the Sumner County Emergency Management Agency, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, Bureau, Federal Bureau. Oh, so he's saying that he's worked with all these parties. Sumner County P Sheriff's Office, the TBI, the Sumner County Emergency Management Agency, TBI, FBI, EcuSearch, and ever specialised search organisations. Is that what you're saying? That he's worked with all them? Whoop do. They have their own EcuSearch have their own team. They have their own drone people. They have their own divers. They have their own people who go horseback. They have their own of everything. They don't need private investigators to come and go, I've got a drone I can use. It's all right, mate, we've got our own drones. You know what I mean? They don't need him. FBI and TBI, oh, come on, come on. I'll just hope when, this, if this does go to court, this does get accepted in, right, that he's got the proof to show that he's worked with the Emergency Management Agency, TBI, FBI, 
Texas, Texas Extra Search and, ever, and all the other, other specialized search organizations. Has he got the proof? Has he got their proof? Because that, if I was a judge, I'd be going, okay, where's your proof? Bring your proof. Put your proof on the table here. I'm not taking your word for it. I want proof that you've worked with these. You say you have, so show us. Oh, God. These searches have utilised advanced techniques including ground teams, air assets, K9 units and proprietary methods. Not once has any of these legitimate search organisations claimed interference in their efforts. No, they haven't been interfered with. They haven't. It's the YouTubers, the, the everyday YouTubers who are going down on, on the ground, boots on the ground, out there looking. It's everyday Joe Blogs and Jane Doe's and whatever you want to say, call them, out there searching that have had the harassment, the intimidation and the cyberbullying. It's them. They wouldn't dream of doing anything to these. Could you imagine a YouTuber having a go at any of them organisations? Could you imagine it? They would be ripped to bits. Right? So let's just see. Does it actually say, I'm actively involved as a licensing investigator and a search and rescue specialist conducting them? Yeah. So did he say he actually worked with them? I don't know. No, I don't think he did. No, so searches have also been have also been conducted with government and private search teams. Okay, so he hasn't actually said he worked with them. I'm gonna say my my fault. I'm misread. But I'm not going to go and say anything to this law to that law. I'm not. Furthermore, Acknowledge has publicly publicly revealed their dangerous and illegal intentions, such as drugging individuals to coerce information. Please stop. Don't make me laugh. They argue that licensed physicians would administer narcotics, but the defence is flawed. Prescribing medications for non medical purposes, such as gathering statements during unlicensed interrogations, is against the law. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Doug has already said, right? They have that to fall back on. They can use that. If, A, they get the cooperation from the person they want to give the truth serum to. So say they wanted to give it to me, right? I'm involved in this case. It's my son missing. I'll say, yeah, I love you. There's the paper, I'll sign you. Yep, there it is. Give me the truth serum. You, they, then I'm just going to go, right, come here, you. Come here. Right, you. Mm. Jab them with the truth serum. Come on. They have to have the paperwork. They have to get their permission. They have to find the doctors and nurses, whoever, to administer it. It's not just something where they sit among a chair, tie them up and inject them with a truth serum. Christ. It's already explained how that would work. Not like they would use it. They've got it if it's needed. And Seth has even said, give me the paperwork. Let me sign the paperwork. I'll do it. You can do it with me. Give me the truth, Stephen. Right? Seth has said himself, give me the truth, Stephen. So. They would only do it if they had their acknowledgement, their permission to do so. Right? The involvement of licensed physicians does not absolve at night from their unlawful or unethical conduct. A screenshot of the internet posting posting by at night and Nancy Lee's attention. Have you got the video of Dog saying what he did? Have you? Have you got that video? Because he, denounce, he will denounce all of what you just said there. 
he would literally wipe the floor with you. Because he has said they need their permission to do so. This is why I wait till the end. I haven't read all of this. I was go I quickly glanced through it earlier. Oh god. I file this opposition not only to protect the integrity of the investigation into Sebastian Rogers' dispute, but also to prevent the plaintiffs from using a legal system to silence opposing voices. Hold on, hold on, hold on again. It's okay for your defendants to laugh and joke about when BHB was being dragged into court, when BHB was arrested, and it just so happened that one of the uh, one one of your little teamy mates was just on hand just at that moment when she got arrested and was able to film it. That was okay, was he? Yes. But now because it's two of your little teammates, it's I know they saying, right, this can't you can't do this. Why not? You tried to silence Betty, and you have, because she can't talk or acknowledge or anything about Chris or Katie Proudfoot. She can talk about Sebastian and the case, but she cannot go near the Proudfoot or Barry Sox, can't acknowledge them, can't phone them, can't email them, can't go anywhere near them, can't have nothing to do with them. So you've silenced her a little bit, haven't you? But that's okay. Their actions are nothing more than an attempt to capitalise on a tragic event. While legitimate investigate. Please, can someone... I need a drink. I need a drink. I think I'm... I wish I could drink, but I can't because I'm on medication. I'm on. I so want a gin and tonic. I really do at the moment, but I can't have one. Can't have one for another three years. Their actions are nothing more than an attempt to capitalise on a tragic event, while legitimate investigators and search organisations continue the tireless work of seeking the truth. Uh, search organisations... Those ones up the top, like Extra Search and TBI and FBI, they're getting no trouble. But when Seth brings in an outside organisation, even, I believe, what was that other one that uh, came in to help? Oh, God, I can't think now. They backed off. Hold on. They backed off because... It was getting a bit too hot under the collar for them. They backed off. So every time anyone, br Seth, brings in an uh, organisation to help search, they're getting threatened, they're getting harassment, they're getting intimidation, everything. As soon as I knew, like when dog come in, everyone was, oh, I know, he's looking at dog and going, how's he going to help? He's got so much of a flipping following. People know Dog the Bounty Hunter. People in the UK know Dog the Bounty Hunter. People in the UK follow Dog the Bounty Hunter. So that all his followers will now know about this missing 15-year-old boy. All his followers across the USA, the states, the county, uh, Count, whatever it is, county lines, state lines, right? All them states will know now about Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers because of the following that dog, the bounty hunter has. All those people that follow Nick the Hat will now know about Sebastian because of the big following he has. So how is that hurting the case? Why are you? Why are people so bothered about these? About them coming in and helping? Why? Are they scared the truth will be found? Are they? Are they scared that the truth will come out and Sebastian will be found and the truth will come out?
The court must deny this injunction to ensure that the ongoing search for Sebastian Rogers remains untainted by the reckless and self-serving actions of their plaintiffs. The plaintiffs. Hmm. The proposed order for injunction relief will harm the efforts to find Sebastian Rogers that are underway by legal and licensed investigators. Argument A. Plaintiffs are operating as an unlicensed investigative agency. Hatton Light Media LLC and its employers are acting as a private investigator and intelligence agency. Well, I'm just going to leave you some risk because my phone's just flashed up, someone's at my door. So I've just got to go see who's messing about at my door. Um. <coughs> Warning, some viewers may find the following footage deeply disturbing. Warning, some viewers may Forget find the one. following footage Forget that deeply one. disturbing. That one. You hit that one, I can't see properly. You got that. I am back. I swear to God, we must have some midgets because I couldn't see them on my screen. Right? Because it comes up on my screen and I could see the foyer area, but I couldn't see no one in there. I'm thinking, who's at my door? So I've just gone to my door and looked through my pee pee hole and there's no one there. So I think someone's come up, rang up very quickly, and as I've hit the bang, rang away around away from the camera at where the camera will catch up so, so I'm sorry about that let's continue with this plaintiffs are operating as an unlicensed investigative agency At Night Media LRC is and its employees are acting as private investigators and intelligence agency without required licenses. How do you know they haven't got any licenses? <laughs> you know what I mean? Violating Tennessee law and the laws of other states. Right, let's just click on this link and see what it takes now. Hmm. 
นะครับพอวิ่งเทเลชินชายชินชิสจันแต่มุสตับซุมเออฮัลโหลเจ็บปวดแต่มุสตับซุมลอยซินส์แต่มุสตับแต่ข้าดูแต่ข้าพูดไม่ถึงสาวอาจจะพอวิ่งเทเลชินชายจริงคุณคิดว่าเวทีสอดได้ออฟเซอร์ฟิสเซชั่นคุณงั้นเวทีการสิ่งเคยไปออปเรชั่นสแตลิ่งเทเลชั่นคอลเลคชั่นดีเซอร์เซอร์ฟิสจะฟูลสแควร์ลี่วิดิ้งเดอะเพอร์วิวออฟลอร์สินพรอยด์วิ่งเกสต์การจัดสรรลอยฟอร์สเมนต์ไอจีซีเฟิร์สมูลอัพนอตวิควาจะ500000วิคาร์นอัพชิ้นกายเซอร์เซอร์ฟิสเจมส์ทรายชนะได้ออกคุณยกชิ้นบิสเนสอาจจะองลอสต์เอาก่อนนี่นะอีสปลาซิแล้วก็อีนอร์ทกละอจะสิ่งนี้คืออีนอร์ฟลาซิฟูมาวินเจนว่าใช่อันนี้สิ่งไหนเวลาหน่อยงานสมุดปีอินเวสติกาในจิสเพนส์สเปสชิมวอลจ์สแต่พูดเล็กเล็กดิสคลอสจะพลังที่ยูสเอ็กซ์ตรีมองแอฟริกาเมื่อเชื่อสุขจิตวิทยาสตรัชเชอร์ออฟพิสคริปชั่นดรอปส์และสกอร์คูลเซฟเซอร์เรมส์วู้ก็จะมาช่วยซีเรมส์ที่คือสิ่งที่พิจารณาในการประกอบการอินฟอร์มาชั่น As stock said, they have to get the permission of the person first. They're not going to tell them to a chair, gag them, and inject them with the truth serum. That is not how it works. These tactics not only violate legal and ethical standards, but also further prove that Agnar is attempting to operate as an unlicensed investigative entity. And methods are not only illegal but also threaten to compromise integrity of any legitimate investigation by tampering with potential evidence in a manner that would render it inadmissible in court. Atnoy also uses languages on their website that leads readers to believe they have working relationships with federal, state, and local law, which is simply not true. How do you know it's not true? Where's the paperwork? Where's your proof? Where's the proof to say they do not, they have not had working relations with federal, state, or local law enforcement agencies? Show the proof. Plaintiff Nikola is prohibited from engaging in investigations by his parole conditions. Yeah, he is. Perhaps he is. Nick the Hat, as noted in the plaintiff's own filings, is currently on parole. His parole officers restricted, restricted his ability to engage in any further involvement in this case, citing violations of his parole term. According to their complaint, Nick the Hat has been explicit, explicitly barred from engaging with law enforcement in any capacity, and upon information and belief, he has been remanded to the mental health care. Are you serious? Oh God! He's trying to discredit him now by saying he's got mental health issues. He's not all there in the head. Is it? Please, is he serious? And upon information and belief, so this is just what he's been told. Yeah. This is just what he's been told. Now, if this isn't true, do you know we could have you for slander? That is slanderous. 
because you haven't actually put, in my opinion, you just put hang upon information and belief. Or he should have gone allegedly. He is being remanded to mental health care. You haven't put either. You haven't put IMO or allegedly before or after any of that. I hope he does. I hope he can take the thoughts, Langer, because if someone said that about me, if I was on parole, right, okay, you can't have any contact work with the police or anything like that. He's not working with the police, right? He works with dog. He's not leaving his state. He's still where he is. He's not working with police. He's not talking to police. He's not interacting with the police or FBI, TBI or anyone. He's really just the mouthpiece. Nick the Hat is his mouth. Is the mouthpiece. He can't do anything but report on TikToks or whatever he, or on YouTube, whatever it is he uses to tell to inform people what's going on, and that's what he's doing. And that was his job in the first place. And that was his job to get people riled up. Yeah. And it's worked. But to say he has been remanded to mental health care, that's not on. This not only undermines his credibility, but also further demonstrates that the plaintiffs have no standing to act in any investigative capacity. Any investigative work or engagement with law enforcement attempted by Nicola Hatt was done without authority, violating his parole and calling into question the validity of his, the plaintiff's claims. He hasn't been working with the police. He's been working with dog. He's been talking to dog or hung. One of them two. He's not been talking to law enforcement. He's not been talking to TBI. He's not been talking to FBI. They tell him, and then he puts it out on his YouTube channel. And he's doing a great job by getting you like, all worked up over what? And so, oh, I can't believe he said that. As recently as two hours before all this the filing of this opposition, plaintiff Nick the Hat, despite being represented by counsel, released a video on the internet in which he attempted to intimidate individuals covering the case by Sebastian Rogers with threats of similar legal action. Yes, we watched that video. And it's not threats, it's going to happen. This is going to happen. In this video, Nicola Hat claimed to have already identified 50 additional lawsuits that are to be filed imminently. Yes. And you're going to be one of them now, mate. But is that your point? Is that what you want them to do? It further stated that if the defendants in the current action complied, with request for injunctive, injunctive relief, the case would be settled. And the judge would approve it on Wednesday. Yes, if they turn around and say, OK, we're sorry for what we said, we will not say no more, we're not going to do no more of that, we're just going to do what we like. You know what I mean? If they said and showed, gave them a video proof that they put a video out telling their subscribers, their members, their followers, everyone, not to engage with these people, with any of these uh, plaintiffs, not to threaten them, not to harass them, not to intimidate them. If they put a video out online, on YouTube, on TikTok, wherever they have to, and they show that to the judge, and they abide by what they're asking, which is just to stop all this intimidation and harassment and everything, then it will be, it will be finished by Wednesday.
by Wednesday. It's not that hard to understand. Right? This is particularly worrisome, considering that Nicola Hatt has repeatedly mentioned that co-counsel for the plaintiffs is a former Attorney General in Pennsylvania. Yes, he is. He is. The language and cadence used in his video could easily be interpreted as threatening. It's just saying, come on then, if, if you want to put in what you're doing now, in our position, right, go ahead, do it. We're not stopping you. Just make their case easier. But they're not stopping anyone from putting in an opposition. And that's what he said in the video. He claimed that the judge will rule in favour of the plaintiffs on Wednesday. It gives the impression that Acknow is le leveraging his co counsel former governmental connections to gain an unfair advantage in this case. While this non party person does not believe this to be the case, Nicola Hatt is using this narrative to create fear among the nine defendants and the 50 unnamed defendants he claim are next in line for legal action. Believe me, there's a load more. I really can't believe that it's going to happen. They've been saying it for weeks and for weeks they've been working on this. The one plaintiff, plaintiff said, she kept saying in her life, trust me, just trust me. Just trust me. She couldn't say anything else because it was being dealt with. And she couldn't say nothing until it came out. And then she could talk about it. But she can't actually talk about the case. She can only say, that's what I was saying. Just trust me. When she kept saying to her followers, and they're saying, look, you need to talk, to, you need to do this, and you, just trust me. Just trust me. They knew it was being dealt with. It's not just an overnight thing they've come up with this. This has been going for weeks now. Weeks, because first of all, they had to get the um, cease and desist letter sent out. Right, so they had to get all this information in before they sent the cease and desist letters out. They got sent out. They, they ignored those cease and desist letters, and in them cease and desist letters, which we read yesterday, it gave, it stated, linked, that they have linked this, the uh, court case, to it. Right, so they knew. If they didn't cease and desist, that would happen. Nicola Hart conducts both in his videos and throughout these public statements raises serious concerns about his intent to weaponize the legal system to silence voices critical of acknowledged handling of the case and create an atmosphere of fear and intimidation. No, he's not. We're not scared of him. Why are you so scared of him? We're not. We're not scared of him. Because we're not doing anything wrong. That's why we're not scared of him. This further underscores why injunctive relief is unwanted in this case and would embolden such reckless and unethical behaviour. No, this needs to go through. This needs to go through because if not, people like you and whoever will carry on doing what they've been doing. Dwayne Dog Chapman is not a licensed private investigator. He said that in his interview. Did you not watch that interview? 
plaintiff Dwayne Dog Chapman is a well-known public figure and BAM junker. However, he's not a licensed private investigator in Tennessee or any other state. No reason. Bounty hunting is distinct from private investigation. Yes, it is. And Chapman has no legal authority to conduct investigative activities related to the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. Why not? You are. YouTubers are. We've got YouTubers who get phone calls from certain people. So they are doing investigative, so why can't why can't dog? We're not lost to lost some PIs, but there's a lot of YouTubers out there getting information from people. They're not private investigators, but they're getting investigation. They're getting the information. So are you going to have all those YouTubers as well? His involvement in this case further demonstrates that these plaintiffs are not acting in legal sanctioned investigative capacity. Oh, for Christ's sake. Plaintiff Andrew Griffin's involvement in this case is deeply compromised by her legal history, including four active protected orders issued against her. These orders are not trivial. No, they're not. They have been granted in favour of the mother, stepfather and grandparents of the missing 15-year-old boy. Step grandparents, step grandparents, they're not blood to him. They don't care about him. Right? He's got other grandparents who do love him. He's got other relatives on Katie's side of the family that do love him and want him home. But uh, grand, you can't call them grandparents. They're not his grandparents. They're not blood to him. They're his step grandparents. I'm missing 15 year old boy Sebastian Rogers. Griffin has been arrested and charged with six violations of these protected orders, which are directly connected to this case. They are directly connected to the mother, the stepfather, and the step grandparents. Right? Yes. At night, which purports to represent her, has no standing to seek injunctive relief on her behalf. Why not? Why the hell not? Especially when Griffin has continuously violated court orders related to the very matter before this court. But that's a separate matter. That's a separate case. Separate case. It's... Oh, God. Griffin's extensive criminal record and a repeat lies on sworn documents further undermine her credibility. What lies? On what, on what documents? Show the proof. She has, she has a documented history of filing false police reports. Show the proof. And misleading regulatory agencies. Show the proof. Moreover, she has openly admitted to abusing the legal system to harass servers. Show the proof. Using it as a tool for re retaliation due to her misunderstandings of legal procedures. Show the proof. Show the proof. That's all I'll say today. Just recently, Griffin released a YouTube video in which she accused judges and Thai law enforcement agencies in Thai counties of corruption. Yes, she did. I agree, she did. And I didn't agree with that. She shouldn't have said that. Even more troubling, Griffin has been featured in a video promoting white supremacy. What video? Has anyone seen this video? Please, if you've seen this video and you're watching this, can you put a comment as to what video it is, please? Because I've not seen that which is calling out in a chant of white power. Hmm. This behaviour is evidence of a profound lack of moral integrity and a sworn declaration that should not be taken seriously by this court. Hmm. Show the proof. Show the video. 
Show that video. Come on. Given her criminal history, repeated dishonesty and immoral actions displayed, Griffin's claims and declarations hold no merit and should not be considered by the court. Oh, so just because she's got four protective orders on her, right? And just because she violated them, somehow, I do not know how, but she violated them and got put in prison, jail for 17 hours and then had to go back to court over them. And he's still fighting this. Right? Just because of that, it's okay. It's okay then for the uh, defendants to say what they've been saying and doing and everything else. Is that okay then? Yeah? Okay. Right? No, it's not okay. Seth Rogers' self-admission as a suspect. Seth Rogers, the father of Sebastian Rogers, has repeatedly self-admitted that he is a suspect with law enforcement in the disappearance of his son. Yes, he's not said he's a suspect. He's just stated that no one has been cleared and no one will be cleared until this investigation is over. His role in this case raises serious concerns about the legit. So, oh, I'll give up. I'll give up. His role in this case raises serious concerns about the legitimacy of the plaintiff's claims. Furthermore, listen, as a non custodial parent, non custodial, he had 50 50 custody rights. So he is custodial. He had 50-50 custody rights. So how can you say that? Seth Rogers lacks the authority to pursue these legal claims without the consent of the custodial parent. He had 50-50 custodial rights to, with Sebastian, who has not filed any such claims. No, because she knows what Seth is saying is correct. She knows that. Otherwise, why hasn't she had Sebastian up in court, uh, Seth up in court? Because he has 50-50. He's entitled to say what his feelings are about this case, his opinions. Right? Right. Oh, that got me mad. This is getting me mad as I go along. Tony Mathis' role lacks credibility and authority. Tony plaintiff Tony Al Mathis, who has been portrayed as a spokesman for the plaintiff, has no prior experience in such a role, nor does he have any investigative experience or legal authority. Hold on, just checking something. Okay. Legal authority to act on behalf of the plaintiffs in this case. He isn't acting on behalf of the plaintiffs. He isn't acting on their behalf. How is Tony acting on their behalf? He isn't. Well, his involvement appears to be purely in for performative serving no legitimate purpose in furthering the investigation of Sebastian Rogers' disappearance. All right. Ooh, bite my tongue, bite your tongue, Angie. So instead, Mathis' primary role seems to involve hosting late night 2 a.m. chat sessions with females interested in the case on TikTok, where he's infamous for inappropriate behaviour. Right. There was a lot going about that, and I don't know what happened. Was he hacked? I don't know. But something was showing up on his live stream. But I don't know how he could have done that. 
because it was like just a shadow. Like, you know, when you do them finger shadows behind a, a sheet. Right? It's like that. Now, how could you do that when you had a picture up on the screen? I guess how you could get is whatever into the phone behind the picture on the screen. Come on. <sighs> this conduct further calls into question his credibility and suitability to acting any professional or public facing role in this case. If Seth wants him, it's up to Seth. Not up to you, not up to me, not up to anyone else. Mathis' actions far from assisting investigation appear to be self-serving and designed to garner attention rather than aid in any meaningful resolution of this case. Right? Pleading Julie Valenti in plausible claims and lack of standing. 1. Pleading on behalf of her mother. In several sections of the complaint, including paragraph 287, it appears that plaintiff Julie Valenti is attempting to plead on behalf of her mother. It is important to note, under the law, Valenti cannot represent her mother's legal interest unless she is a licensed attorney or has been appointed as a legal guardian with explicit authority to act on behalf of her mother. This type of representation is prohibited under Pennsylvania law, which strictly limits self representation to his own, to his own claims. While it was a Pennsylvania lawyer, attorney, whatever, that took her statement. So I think he knows. As Valente is not licensed to practice law, she has no legal standing to advocate for her mother in this case. Okay, so it's okay then for people to go after everyone's mum and give out the name of, of where she works. What about the children at that school? Come on. They gave out the, her mother's work address, the school where her mother worked. What about the children? Why did someone have come to that school? Why? To attack her mother. Yeah? Why have they come to that school to attack her mother? Oh, but there's no kids about. It's okay. No, there's kids in her school. You cannot give out information of someone's workplace, especially where there's children involved. For Christ's sake. Oh, God. Now, this gets me. This bit. Questionable military credentials. <sighs> Valenti has made several public claims of being a Department of Defence K-9 handler with combat experience, which is subjected to scrutiny regarding the authenticity of her credentials. She's a captain. A cap. Oh, for Christ. Can I... I want to hit someone. Oh, God. It is well established that individuals who make such extraordinary claims must be able to stump, substantiate them with variable evidence. Oh, so you know you want her to put up arm for everyone to see? That she's a captain of this and she's done this to her, she's done that to her, she's done this work, she's done that work, she's took a job, dog's here, she's took a dog's there. You want her to put up all her credentials, right? She's worked flipping hard for them. She don't need to show you feck all. If the judge says, can you show us your credentials, then she can show the judge. But she doesn't have to show you, attorney, anyone, no one, her credentials. I'm sorry, I'm just so mad reading this. 
Valencia's failure to prove proof of her military credentials or her involvement in combat upper reasonably opens up to question. No, it doesn't. It means she's an upstanding USA citizen who is out there fighting for her country. What the hell are you doing? Oh, God. How dare he? How dare he? Any criticism arising from her ability to, to substantiate these claims is justified and does not warrant protection from public scrutiny or injunctive relief. No, it isn't justified. It isn't. Not to you, not to me, not to Joe Bloggs, no one. If the judge asks her for her credentials, then I'm sure she'd say, yeah, here, here they are. But I'd be very surprised if a judge was to ask her her credentials. Because that's questioning someone who's gone out there and put their life on the line for their country. And what have you done? What have you done for your country? I know what I've done. I haven't been put my life on the line for my country. I'll admit I have not. But my heart goes out to everyone in the UK who is out there fighting and dying and for their country and the same for the USA. You know what I mean? Do you question anyone who says, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm homeless, but yeah, I was in the armed forces, just because he's got a jacket on or something with some badges on? Are you going to question them? Shows you, shows proof that you was in the army. Shows proof, shows your involvement in combat operations. Are you going to ask them? No. She showed her qualifications and everything to law enforcement, to TBI, everything. They passed it, they cleared her, they cleared her. So that's all that mattered. She doesn't, she doesn't have to show us anything. Moreover, this non-party opposer has reviewed text messages sent by Valenti in which she falsely claims that her commanding officer in the military has taken over the investigation. No, she doesn't. Yeah, oh. she, proof. Show the proof. She even alleged that the US military will be issuing search warrants in this case. Show the proof. An assertion that is blatantly incorrect. Show the proof. The US military does not have in jurisdiction over civilian law enforcement matters and cannot issue to carry out search warrants against private citizens without special authorization from Congress under the Post Comitatus Act. This law strictly limits the military's role in enforcing domestic laws barring any unauthorised military involvement in civilian affairs. Fair enough. Show us the proof of what you've just alleged she's, she's said and done. Show us the proof. Because that's just disgusting to say that. I'm sorry. Misleading and altered communications. Valente has also sent what appears to be altered text messages. Altered text messages. How can you alter a text message? Right, you you write a text and probably misworded some it so you go back and correct it. But once that text is sent or someone sent that text to you, you can't alter that text message. Otherwise, a lot of my text messages, if you could do that, I'd have people saying, I love you, I love you, all the time on them, because I'm going and alter them, so they'd be saying, I love you. Oh, my Lord. Attempting to further these claims by creating a narrative that the US military is actively involved in the... Sep Show the proof. Show the proof. These false representations, whether deliberate or due to misunderstanding, have been shown 
doctors must place both investigators and the public. Show the proof. Show us the receipts. As the sound of YouTube street, show us the receipts. The criticism that arises from such blatant, blatant misrepresentation is not only wanted, but is a necessary part of ensuring the transparency. Do you know what you are saying? You could ruin her fecking career. You could have her kicked out the forces. Is that what you're after? Is that what you're planning on trying to do, is have her kicked out of the forces, out of the army, out of the, whoever she works with? Is that what your plan is? Because you're blackening her name and making her sound like she's done all this. But you haven't shown, if you've got the proof, why isn't it, it like um, Exhibit 1, Exhibit 2, Exhibit 3, Exhibit 4? Why haven't you shown them? Why haven't you shown them as exhibits? <sighs> Conclusion. I can't read no more of that because it's just BS. The latest claims and behaviour, particularly are false assertions about the US. I hope this judge, if he approves this and this goes through, goes to him. Where's the proof? Have you got the paperwork? Have you got the videos? Have you got the phone calls? Where's the proof? Where's the fucking Proof. I'm so sorry. I'm getting so mad here. So so sorry. I'm getting so so sorry. I just want. I swear to God, if this person was standing in front of me right now, I'd be knocking ten tons of ish out of him because this is so annoying. He's ruin. He could ruin her career by putting this out about her. By saying this about her. He's not bagging off of what he said about Seth. He's now going after her career. Seth's got a good job. He could lose his job by what he says about Seth. And she could lose her job by what he's saying in this. I hope the judge just throws this right out. I really do. The latest claims and behaviour, particularly a false assertions about the US military involvement and her ability to verify her. She doesn't have to verify her military credentials to you, you little. Have involved, invite public and legal scrutiny. Not by a lot of YouTubers. Maybe those who have been doing the harassing and all that lot. Maybe they have. The fact that these claims cause her embarrassment does not provide grounds for an injunction or protection from the public Christian. She's lost work with her canines through all this. Are you determined for her to lose her job in the forces as well? Keep going. Because she's got a bigger ar she's got a big army behind her. And they know the truth. Keep going. Right, hold on. Let's go back a bit. Public disclosure, especially around an important issue like the disappearance of a child, must remain transparent, and the latest ability, inability to substantiate her claims cannot be shielded by injunctive relief. What about you? What about your inability to substantiate your claims? Come on. Show us the videos, show us all these. Why haven't you got them as Exhibit 1, Exhibit 2, Exhibit 3, Exhibit 4, Exhibit 5? Why? Why haven't you got all them? Because that is what the judge is going to want to see. None of the plaintiffs have standing to claim interference. No, just carry on harassing them. Sending nasty messages to them. Going to their homes. You know what I mean? Just carry on doing that. Why not? Why not? 
because it's illegal. Oh, God, I'm so... I'm so glad we're getting to the end of this, I believe we are. No, we're not even getting to the end of it. We've got another nine pages. The plaintiffs on our licensed investigation must hang up and claim that they are being interfered with in an investigation. Law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, and the Summer County Sheriff's Office, are lost in private investigators have not led to any interference in their own. No, because they're not going to interfere with them. They're not that stupid. They're not that stupid to take on the TBI and FBI and anyone else. There is no credible claim that the defendants in this case, who are the YouTube content creators, providing comment, they're not just providing commentary. They are harassing people. What about that one who says, it's my personal, my effing mission to take him down? And what about that one who said that to, to the camera? I'm going to live to another YouTuber. Hmm? Is that commentary? Because if it is, I must be doing something wrong. Am I doing something wrong? Tell me in my comments if I'm doing something wrong. Because I never thought commentary was anything like that. The lawsuit was filed in Pennsylvania, but the central events concerning this disappearance of Sebastian took place in Tennessee. Yes, but the people who have been doing the harassing and intimidation and bullying and cyberbullying and all this law come from Pennsylvania. It's a bit like a case over in the UK. A few months ago, three, three, Precious little girls were stabbed, were stabbed and unalive. Right? Someone put out on, um, I don't know if it was TikTok, Facebook, or something like that, that it was a certain group of people, certain religion, and all that. So this got people up in arms, up in arms, and a riot started. Right, they over the over the summer they arrested over over four hundred people due to this one message going out. Yeah, due to this one message being put out there. Do you know where they found this person? Where they tracked that message back to? Back to I think it was Pakistan or somewhere like that. Can't remember now. And they've arrested that guy in his country. And he's been charged in his country. So, it's like me saying, putting threats out about a YouTube and whatever. If they wanted to, they could have the FBI on me because that would be international. But my police would come knocking on my door and arresting me. You know what I mean? And I would see go to court here and I'd probably end up in prison for a long time. Ah. It does not have appropriate jurisdiction over the larger case, which concerns investigative agency activities and alleged interference occurring in Tennessee. The proper venue for such clients would be Tennessee. And I believe the one uh, cease and desist letter we read yesterday came from Tennessee. They lived in Tennessee. Hmm. Don't worry. They'll be getting round to them ones. Because I was all named in the paperwork. Tennessee courts have consistently upheld the importance of licensure in the private investigation field. In Tennessee v. Duncan 11, SW3D882, Tennessee 1999, the court held that private individuals or entities conducting investigations without proper licensure are not only acting illegally but are subject to both civil and criminal penalties. Any evidence gathered in such a manner is, in, is ag- inadmissible in court. Well, I do believe if Dr. Banty and all them lot 
I'm doing something illegal. I drink some of your TBI will give said something by now. Even FBI will give said something by now. Oh, God. Moreover, the court has ruled that only those properly licensed can claim interference with an investigation. Like, so that's saying, because I'm not a licensed PI or something like that, and someone's cyberbullying me, harass me, intimidate me, and all that lot, I can't, I can't make, I can't say nothing. I can't make, put a claim in for interference. Just because I sit here and talk on here and then someone's having a go at me and they're cyberbullying me constantly, day in, day out. Right? On my phone. Everything. I can't do nothing. Please, please. He'll probably go for me if he is about this. Oh, what was that? The plaintiff's claim for RICO status is absurd and fails to meet the legal standards. The plaintiffs attempted to claim RICO, Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organisation Act. Status in this case is not only unfounded but absurd. Ab absurd, 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 whatever. The defendants in this case are two YouTube content creators Stephanie Jo Trude and Jessica Lynn Singh. So why are you fighting their corner? Right, you just made a comment back there. Where was it? Uh, but Oh, I can't find it now. But you just said something about how, oh, about uh, Valenti can't go up against her, can't, can't speak for her mother. Why? So why are you speaking for Stephanie Joe Trude and Jessica Lynn Singh? Why are you speaking for them? They've got a problem. They can get lawyers. They can fight it in court or do what they're asking them to do. And that is just stop the fucking harassment and intimidation and cyberbullying. The plaintiffs attempt to claim RICO, racketing, influence and corrupt organisation status in this case is not only unfounded, but absolutely, I can't say. It. The defenders in this case are two YouTube content creators, Stephanie Joe Trude and Jessica Lynn Singh, who are engaged in public commentary. Yeah, that's fine. That is completely fine. But if they are, if it is said that they are, well, getting their members and inciting their members or subscribers to go out and do anything, then that is not fine. There is no legal, common business title or ongoing enterprise linking the defendants to any alleged unlawful activity, nor there is, is there any evidence of an enterprise under the meaning of RICO. Well, I don't think they will get put in a RICO if they haven't got the got it to back up. They've got the videos and everything to back it up. The, the elements required to establish a civil RICO violation under both federal and Pennsylvania law are as follows. One, existence of an enterprise, a group of persons associated together for a common purpose, purpose of engaging in a course of conduct. Well, they've got that. They've got the group of people. Pattern of racketeering activity. At least two acts of racketeering activity committed within a 10 year period. I think they might have that as well. Connection to the enterprise. The defendant must have 
conducted or participated in the conduct of the enterprise affairs through the pattern of racketeering. You know what? They would not go for RICO if they hadn't got some sort of proof or evidence of that going on. Because the lawyers are not two bit lawyers, they're big time lawyers. They know what they're talking about. They've got the proof, they've got the evidence. They know what they are talking about. When did you become a lawyer or an attorney? Please. Plaintiff's allegation failed to meet even the most basic elements of a RICO claim. You don't know what they've got on a RICO claim. You don't know what evidence they've got. No one knows what evidence of a, on a RICO they've got. The only people who would know that would be the solicitors for the two YouTubers. And they're not allowed to tell anyone. And neither are YouTube cre those YouTubers allowed to tell anyone. Right? And there's no common business or legal representation relationship between them. How do we know that? Okay, I heard him on a YouTube channel every day. Apparently that was the first time they've ever rung out. I think they've been, they said they've been on a a panel before, but only for about five, ten minutes or something like that. They didn't have each other's email. Right, so but that's them saying that there. Right? Plaintiffs failed to meet even the most basic elements. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Right, we've read that bit. Right. The Third Circuit defines an enterprise as an, an entity composed of individuals or entities tied together through a common purpose. Well, they are tied together through a common purpose. They're tied together through YouTube, and their common purpose is to harass, intimidate, and cyber bully some other YouTubers. That's their common purpose. And they're tied together through YouTube. The court explained that the enterprise must have an existence separate and apart from the pattern of activity in which it engages. Right? That's all right, something just came up on my phone. It wasn't my door. The court explained that the enterprise must have an existing separate and apart from the pattern of activity in which it engages. The plaintiffs have not and cannot demonstrate that two consent formed any such going entity or enterprise. Instead, the defendants are merely individual providing commentary which does not rise to the level of a coordinated criminal enterprise. Further in further in Tobias Tabas v Tabas 47 F3D 12803 Third Circus Circuit 1995. The court reaffirmed that RICO claims require proof of a pattern of racketeering activity. They must have that proof. The pattern must consist of multiple related active acts of criminal. Right? Just because. Oh my lord, I've just clicked what he's doing. I've just had a floor. You know, by him saying what he said on X, and by him saying what he's saying on here, it could force them to file against him. Yeah? And then they've got to give all this information, all the video proof, all the, all the exhibits, everything they've got on this case, to his counsel co co to his uh, lawyer in which case he'd be able to see it oh my god is that why he's doing this Uh, given that the defendants are independent content creators with no common business or enterprise relationship and that the plaintiffs failed to demonstrate any pattern of racketeering activity or other criminal conduct, 
their RICO claim falls well short of the legal standard. The plaintiff's misuse of RICO in this context trivializes the statute and fails to meet the rigorous requirements set by Pennsylvania and federal courts for civil RICO action. <sighs> the plaintiff failed to meet the legal standard for preliminary injunction. Under Pennsylvania law, a party seeking preliminary injunctive relief must satisfy a stringent legal standard. The Pennsylvania Supreme Supreme Court in War Wareheim v. Wareheim 580PA201-860A.2D41-2019 set forth the criteria that must be met for a preliminary injunction to be granted. Don't you think these are very, very, very qualified uh, Attorneys know what they're doing. The party must show that they will suffer immediate and irreparable harm at the junction. And they can. Because if this injunction is not granted, these women, whoever, YouTubers, whoever, will carry on doing what they're doing. The party must demonstrate a likelihood of success on the merits of their underlying case. They can do that. The balance of harm must favour the party seeking an injunction. They can do that. Meaning the harm to them overrides any harm to the opposing party. Well, if the injunction is put through, the opposing part, um, defendants aren't going to suffer anything. It just means they can't go. They have to stop with the harassment, stop with the cyberbullying, the intimidation. Put a video out or something, telling their members, do not approach them, do not go to their homes, do not email them, do not text them, do not phone them, do not message them, do not do anything. Don't go on their sites, don't comment, anything. Right? That's what they need to do. And they need to keep telling them that. In fact, make a little video and put it at the beginning of every one of their lives so then they're not forgetting that, oh, we can't do this, can we? Okay. Just put it at the beginning of every live. The injunction must be reasonably tailored to about the harm. <laughs> Did you not read what these poor... What, not just BHB, but the others. The other YouTube the other YouTuber and the other people involved. Did you not read any of them? The party must show the injunction will not harm the public. It's not going to harm my public interest. It's not going to harm anyone else's. It might help everyone else because then they can all think, you know what, I'm not going to get cyberbullied no more because this is, we can, they can be took to court. And it might make people think twice about cyberbullying and intimidation and harassment and all that long. Shit. I shouldn't say this, should I? Delete. Delete it. Delete the video. It's not going out. Stop the video and delete it. You know what I mean? Because you could be took to court. So, yes, you will not harm the public interest. I mean, no media, media or reparable, irreparable harm. The plaintiffs cannot establish any credible claim of impairable, reputable harm as outlined in Summit Time Sense, blah, blah. The reputable harm must be imminent and incapable of being compensated by my... Yeah, you try... You could give someone two million dollars. That is not going to help with... Uh, the depression, the anxiety, being made to feel like a bad mother. That is not going to help any of them. Money will not help them. But people stop doing this harassing and in, in whatever else, it will help them. Because eventually, they'll be able to wake up in the morning and go, Oh, okay, no messages on my phone. 
And when the phone pings, they know it's not going to be a nasty one. Because if it is, they can take them to court. Right? Claim chiefs claim the public that public commentary is interfering with their unlicensed investigation. So just because you've got a license, it's okay for you to do the investigation. But we can't because we're YouTubers. But you're claiming you're standing up for two YouTubers that haven't got a license. Make that make sense? It's intervening with their unlicensed investigation. However, they are not legally authorised to conduct such an investigation. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't give a bite my tongue anymore. I love no fucking tongue left. I'm fed up a bite my tongue. However, they are not legally authorised to conduct such investigations. They're not actually conducting an investigation. They are just commentating on the words that are being put out there by certain people. That's what I've always said. I go on by what they say. That's why I talk about CPB, because he annoys me, like feck. And what he says sometimes really, really does annoy me. So we listen to their words and we talk about what they said. We're not actually investigating because we're not out there looking. We're not knocking on doors. We're not taking questions of people. We're talking about what we hear, what is being said. Therefore, any harm they claim is speculative and not unparable. Yes, it, oh my God. Does this man have no idea of how much harm cyberbullying can be? You know what I mean? It's demoralising. It wears you down to the point where you can't... You, you probably think, you know what, my kids are better off without me. That's like a domestic violence situation where people say, why don't the woman leave the man? It's because the man's worn that woman down so much. She thinks, no one will want me anyway. I'm broken. Plus, where would I leave? How would I feed my children? Right? But if I stay here, I keep getting beaten up. But that's okay because I'll be able to, at least my kids will have a roof over their heads. And that's why they stay. Until they get the courage to get to do something and leave. Until they get the help and the support they need to leave. This is how demoralising cyberbullying is. God forbid any of those YouTubers, any of these people, the plaintiffs, had ever, ever done what could have happened. But you know what? These plaintiffs are strong women, but not that strong to, const to have this constant barrage of insults, harassment, intimidation, day after day, 24-7. No one could take that. I'm a strong woman, and believe me, I'd start off strong, but I think after about maybe a month, I probably would have got rid of my laptop and rid of my phone. And yes, then they've won, because they've got me off YouTube. You know what I mean? I can't believe he said that. Therefore, any harm they claim is speculative. It's not speculative and not irreparable. It's, <laughs> Especially given their lack of legal standing as unlicensed. They're not investigators. They never said they are investigators. They're YouTubers. The only parts capable of suffering irreparable harm are law enforcement and licensed investigators. Conducting a legitimate search for Sebastian Rogers. So it's okay to have a go at that dog handler and ruin her career. Yeah? 
Is that okay? To say what you said. Just because she won't show you her paperwork. She doesn't need to show anyone her paperwork. She showed law enforcement her paperwork. She showed TBR. That was all I needed to see. And if the judge wants to see it, then she'll show it the judge. But she doesn't need to show you or anyone. The only part is kind of like click it and let it be blah 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 blah. The work has not been interfered with as a se yes, her work has been. That dog handler's work has been interfered with. Why? Because she's lost work, which normally a, a certain organisation would have her and her dogs go and do work for them. They don't want nothing to do with her now. They're not giving her any work. So she's lost that work. YouTubers have not been able to get on, come online and do what they love to do, which is sit here like me and talk and talk and talk and talk. But they've not been able to do that because they've been so worn down one day by all these nasty comments coming forward. That they're thinking, I'm not going online tonight. I'm not doing it tonight. I can't do it no more. So she's not being able to get online and do what she loves to do and to make and to bring in a bit of living, a bit of extra money for her family, for her children. I hope you don't have children. I really do. No likelihood of success on their marriage. The plaintiffs cannot... Well, I'm just going to be as droll as anything vegan is because I'm getting really paid up with him now, okay? Because I've got to stay calm, because I've got another six pages to get through of this. The plaintiffs cannot demonstrate a likelihood of success on the merits of this their case as required by valid blah, 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 blah. Their complaint is fundamentally flawed because they are unlicensed to conduct. They're not con <laughs> right. Which directly they're not violating any Tennessee law. That means every YouTuber. That means me. Every YouTuber is violating Tennessee law. They're not investigators. They're not investigating. They are YouTubers. Furthermore, their claims that public commentary interferes with their efforts are baseless, especially since none of the legitimate licensed investigators working on this case have claimed interference. Get that off my screen. Balance of arms favours the opposing party. The balance of arms tips strongly in favour of the opposing party, silencing media. Oh, you're talking that, you're saying that, media person, personalities. So are they licensed? Are they licensed media? Are they licensed media? Right? Is it licensed media that, we, that they're trying to silence? Are these YouTubers licensed media? No. But you're referring to them as licensed media. Silence media with personalities. They're not media. They're YouTubers. And restricting public disclosure will cause far greater harm by obstructing transparency and potentially limiting vital greater harm by obstructing vital information that could help locate Sebastian Roberts. Yeah, okay. Issuing, putting threats out there, uh, harassing someone, intimidating, Cyberbullying is really helping finding Sebastian Rogers, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Perhaps we should all do that, then we perhaps we might find perhaps if we all became cyber bullies, right? We go we find Sebastian. Because that's all they do is cyber bully and intimidating and harass and visit homes, go to and people are going to their homes. And, and saying such harsh things about their work 
about them in their work. There's Seth, there's Valentini, Valent Valenti, sorry. They could lose their fucking jobs because of this foul contempt of Oh God. The balance of equities must favour the party seeking injunctive relief. Here the plaintiffs are attempting to secure the narrative in their favour through an injunction. Despite their lack of legal authority and their reckless, dangerous tactics they propose to use in their unlicensed investigation. The injunction will harm public interest is not served by grant. You know, Oh, that is bullshit. I'm not even going to read that bit. Public interest is not served by granting this injunction. I'm not even going to read that bit because I'm going to get so flipping mad with that. I will get... my. I think my laptop will go flying out the window. No reasonable tailoring, for, tailoring for, of the injunction. Finally, the proposed injunction is not reasonably tailored to address any specific harm. Plaintiff seeks to build the silence media figures and access. To hey, here we come. And access their communications. They don't want to give up their communications, do they? They don't want to give up their messages, their phone messages, their emails, and all that lot. Right? The broad overreach is another reason the injunction should not be granted as it fails to meet the requirements of not being narrowly tailored to about the specific harm alleged. The plaintiffs do not meet any of the burdens required for injunctive relief under Pennsylvania law. And you're such a lawyer, aren't you? Didn't know he was a lawyer. Okay. The claims of irreparable harms unsupported the lack a likelihood of success on their merits and granting injunction will harm both the public in no it's not gonna harm the public interest and the integrity of the invest it's not gonna harm the integrity of the investigation. It probably help people think, you know what? Now this has gone through. They can't threaten me no more. So yeah, I I feel I can talk now. They can't threaten me no more. They can't hold this over my head no more. Because otherwise I could go to prison. And it would help people come out and talk. And tell, people, tell law enforcement, FBI, TBI, what they know. Um, both the public interest and the integrity of the investigation. It's not going to harm the investigation into the disappearance of Sebastian Rose. As such, this court must deny their request for injunctive relief. Conclusion. The plaintiff's motion for a preliminary injunction should be denied. They failed to meet the requirements for injunctive relief. Out. Shit, that one hurt. Just bit my tongue and that one did hurt. Ah, ah. Oh. Sorry. I did say I had to stop biting my tongue, but I had to bite my tongue down and that one did just nick a bit. I bit a bit too hard. They failed to meet the requirements for injunctive relief, lack of standing as licensed investigators, have not demonstrated that their case has any merit. The legal, illegal activity, see, I can't talk now. Their illegal activities are as unlicensed, they're not in. Unlicensed investigators should not be protected in granting any injunction to harm the public interest by, sent by silencing critical reporting on a matter of public concern. Moreover, this meritless, meritless legal profiling appears to be nothing more than a publicity stunt orchestrated by Paroli Nicola Hack as an unemployed reality television figure, Dwayne Dog Chapman. 
<laughs> oh god. Are you jealous that he's got more money? He's got nice homes. He's got a lot of money. Oh god. I employed reality television because I oh, fucking love it. I can't believe he's saying this though. His career has long since faded. No, his career hasn't long since faded. They still got that. I believe they still do the bounty hunting. Uh, his son does. And other members of the family, I believe, are still doing the bounty hunting. They are now resorting with the help of publicity seeking lawyers to gain the public's attention at the expense of a missing 15 year old boy from Hankston. Such conduct is not only proper but an abuse of. <laughs> that made me laugh. That was the first laugh I've had during a lot of reading this. Abuse of the legal system and it must not be allowed to proceed under the guise of a legitimate legal action. For these reasons, the motion for injunctive relief should be denied in its entirety, respectfully submitted. That was dated yesterday, so that was filed online yesterday. And yes, there's his address, I'm not hiding it. Right? Uh, yeah. Exhibit A. Oh, look. State of Tennessee. Uh, can you tell us then when someone took your the number, your license number, which is yeah, ID number one nine one zero one. Licence status expiration date November the 30th, 2024. Right. Can you tell us then why someone who went on the site punched in your details and nothing came up? Isn't that interesting? Someone went on the site Punched in his license number and all that lot, and nothing came up. And this is Exhibit B, right? At night, has been retained by a private individual or entity to provide service to Seth Rogers, the father of Sebastian Rogers, to assist in the search for Sebastian and facilitate the arrest and prosecution of the individuals responsible for his disappearance. Uh, this collaboration is continu contingent on Seth Rogers' full and continued cooperation, which is already demonstrated. At night will actively, independently from law enforcement, applying its own rigorous protocol and treating all persons of interest with equal scrutiny. Information will be shared with federal law enforcement officials in real time ensuring a cohesive and transparent flow of actionable intelligence throughout the investigation. Now, if they were so, so bad, if they were so as bad as you say, I'm sure law enforcement and federal law enforcement would have said something. Not me. At night's commitment to the case involves deploying an array of events, investigative techniques and methodologies. This includes conducting various tests such as... Yes, I must admit when I read this I was going, oh look I use truth serum. Fine. But then when I seen the video, I think it was, um, oh, was it Nancy Grace? I can't remember. And he explained on there 
I don't think it was Nancy Grace. No, it was a. Uh, on oh, I can't remember which one it was now. But he explained. They would get their permission. If they say no, they say no. If they say yes, they get them to sign a consent form. They find the doctor or nurse, whoever, who'd be willing to administer it in a place where there'd be law enforcement, FBI, TBI, there, right? I should imagine. And then question them. Such as, did you have anything to do with Sebastian Rogers going missing? No. Do you know anyone? Or any, do you know of anyone who would have abducted Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers? Yes! See? True. They know now it's someone else. You know what I mean? But I'm not going to do it, tie them down, strap them down and jab them in the arm. They're not all these um, James Bond and all this lot of stuff. Christ's sake. And that is all he's got. Now, if he's got all this evidence, what he's been stating, he would have put it as exhibits. Why hasn't he put them all as exhibits? At night media. They've got a different file, a separate file. Alright, let me find it. They've got a separate file for every piece of information, every statement taken, everything. All right? They've got 323 pages of exhibits, of statements, everything, of the cease and desist letters, of videos, of TikToks, or whatever. They've got the evidence, right? Now they've got that. Now if you want to, you can go and look that up. And watch that. I'm sure they've got it stored somewhere. Downloaded somewhere. You know what I mean? But they've got all this information. All these exhibits. Everything. Everything about Nick the Hack. Going to court. Why he went to prison for. What happened while he was in prison. Everything. Right? And we go on and on and on because there's 200, 323 pages of this, of exhibits. He's given two exhibits, even though he stayed so much more in his uh, opposition, opposing whatever. You know what I mean? Where are all your exhibits? Where are all your proof that of videos and receipts and everything else? The phone calls, the text messages, where are they? You can't just go around and say, well, she falsified some text messages. Uh, where's the proof? Have you got the proof that she falsified some text messages? Yes or no? You can't just go around throwing that out. I hope that's... Oh, God. If, I tell you now, if I was, like, if I was Valenti, I'd be ripping the lawyer to get his backside ripped off his seat for what he's been saying. If I was Seth, I'd be doing the same for what he's put out there. And sorry, I didn't think it would take so long to get through that file, but it was just so annoying. It was only 18 pages. I thought, oh, well, we're through this. No problem. 
No, I can now and a half later. We're still going through it. So I'm sorry about that. But I think he's going to have to get the evidence up. I'm sorry, I've missed the comments. <gasps> sorry, Karen. I have seen these types of creators bully their targets so bad with their subscribers, members, and mods. They spy on their targets' channel. One young creator left for nine months and recently came back. Wow. Really? Cleaning out his now laughing in the lawyer's face. God. See, he needs, from what I've just read, he needs to show the text messages that, that have been altered. If there's any text messages, any call logs, any videos, he needs to have all that. And he's shown none in the exhibits. None. Where at night media have got all the exhibits in a separate file because it was 323 pages long of exhibits. It was it was all about Nick the Hat and his what his charges and all that lot. But it was all, what, that stuff about Nicola Hat was redacted, but that's not for us to know about that. We don't need to know about that. I've heard of creators leaving YouTube. And this was before I started on YouTube myself. I was, heard, I was, I was on a YouTube channel and I was hearing it say about it. I can't remember who it was now. I kept hearing them saying, no, she, she, she left YouTube. You know what I mean? And it's, it has to stop because we're here for one person and that is this little lad, this young lad. If you want to sit and comment out and talk about Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, then that's fine. But don't encourage your members. Like, where was it once? Uh, what was it? I was watching a YouTube channel, and they said that if you support this channel, this channel, this channel, then leave. And I was watching it on my TV, so I couldn't get on chat. So I was just watching it, and I thought, I can't remember who it was now. I thought, really? Did they just say if? We, if we support these certain channels to leave now. I didn't know what the channels were she mentioned. Never heard of them before. So you know what I did? I left. I thought, no one's going to tell me who I can watch or support or follow. You know what I mean? No one. But I'm wondering, like I said, isn't he's going to get hit by this. SF is going to get hit by this. And then he's getting a lawyer. He'll get a lawyer or an attorney or whatever it is. And then he'll get to see all the information which he wants to see. You see, the only information he'll get to see is information against him from what he said about certain creators and whatever. He won't get to see all the other information because it doesn't apply to him. Right? He'll only get to see the information that applies to him. Anyway, I've got to go. Thank you, Karen, for being here.
I'm going to. I can't watch the camera no more. Um, just remember to check Karen. Don't mention creators' names in the chat, please. It's just for. Oh. Reasons where they can't. SF blame Sebastian for CPS. Are you joking me? No. You could just put C L U E clue. I know you mean then, you know what I mean? Um SF blind Sebastian for CPS. Is he for real? Is he for real? I'm not joking. I, I bit my tongue a bit hard last time. I'm quite surprised it wasn't bleeding. Because it fucking hurt. I've been, I was biting my tongue all the way through the region now. I tell you, I need a punch bag. Right? <laughs> And fill it up with sand in the bottom, flight it up. Say like teenagers do this to get out of trouble. Oh my god. No, they don't. He's really asking to be took, isn't he? I think he wants him to take him to court. I really do. Because he's, he's really ramped, ramped it all up. Since all this paperwork came out the other day, he's ramped up his... His ego has been ramped up a bit. But it's not going to hurt the public if this is... If the judge says yes, I put this full of uh, whatever and let it go through, it'll make YouTube a lot better. I'm not worried about it. I say let it go through. But my son said to me, my son, no, not my son. A friend said to me when I mentioned I was starting up a YouTube channel at the beginning of the year. I said I was thinking about starting up a YouTube channel. And they said, I said, you sure? I said, well, I said, well, the amount of times you've spoke about how certain creators are. I, oh, like nothing. Nothing. I'm in the UK. Most of my work, most of my work I cover is in the USA. Right, if they started harassing me, I'd just get a new phone, new email. Right. New phone number, everything. And then take them to court and then make it federal. Because that'd be international link. <sighs> but they have no evidence. He's got no evidence. All I need to do is do a video, right? By Wednesday, put it up on YouTube to all their followers, their memberships, their subscribers, right? And keep it at every live they do, at the beginning of every live they do, right? Advising and asking their followers, subscribers and members not to make contact with these people, I'm not to intimidate them, I'm not to phone them, I'm not to email them, I'm not to go to their homes, right? They've only got to do something like that by Wednesday. And the judge will go, okay, you're gone. Because then they've got it on record. Then that's something they'd have to stick by. You know what I mean? So I say, put it on a video. Put it up, 
so your members and everyone make it public so everyone can see it your members as well it is wrong i was reading those statements last night on the in the exhibits and my my heart was breaking for that one youtuber You know what I mean? It was breaking what she's had to go through. Because no one should go through anything like that. You look, you go to school, you get your bullies at school, yeah? Then you think, when you leave school, you think, thank God for that. I've got through that. I've managed school. I've got through it. Right? But then, you go to work or you do a go online and you do a YouTube channel or you're going to work and you're getting bullied at work, you're getting bullied online. It never stops, especially, as I've said, in today's technology where you've got your mobile phone. Even my watch is synced, synced to my phone, right? And uh, so even if I don't have my phone on me, the messages come through on my watch. So I got, wherever I am, I'm not going to get away from it. So I just have to get rid of my watch. I just have a normal watch. I want one of them Apple watches, is it, where I can set my bank details onto it? And then just go up and go, at the, at the uh, scanner. Okay, I'm just use my wrist. <laughs> my daughter's got one, bitch. <laughs> I said, you can pay off your watch and shit, yeah. I said, but I have to put a code in first, I said, obviously. But you can pay off your watch, I said, yeah. I said, is that an apple or whatever? She said, yeah. I said, how much was that? She said, 200. 200. I nearly died. But I tell you, if I get a spare 200 pounds, I'm buying myself one of those watches. I pin, put the code in and then when I go up to the scanner, just gang my watch. <laughs> and I said, well, I have to put the code in now with my phone. It's so that when I go past anything, it doesn't automatically scan my phone. Right? I have to have the pin code in. Anyway, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Because... I will be back tomorrow and I'll be raring to go for this press interview tomorrow, press release tomorrow, 10 a.m., 3 p.m., I believe it is 10 a.m., yeah, 3 p.m. my time, so that gives me plenty of time to wake up, have my coffee, something to eat, wash, dress to make myself feel a bit decent for coming on here so i'll be back tomorrow at 3 p.m tomorrow where we will hopefully get to see that press release someone will be streaming it hopefully and if not then we can discuss what we've read through tonight and then once i find the video boom that up then but one way or the other, we're going to see that press release tomorrow at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. my time. So until then, have a good night, have a good day, have a good morning, whatever time it is where you are. Have fun, but stay safe.
Thank you all again for being here. Good night.